It's time for Twit. We got a great panel for the first show of the new year. Ian Thompson from The Register, Alex Wilhelm from Crunchbase, Gastro Nomad, Mike Elgin, and we will talk about CES. It's going on this week. The weird Apple earnings adjustment and what it means for the company going forward. And Mike's nice book. It's his Facebook replacement. It's all coming up next on Twit. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Twit, This Week in Tech, episode 700 for Sunday, January 6th, 2019. A car wash for your face. This Week in Tech is brought to you by Atlassian. Atlassian software powers the full spectrum of collaboration between IT teams and the rest of your organization. Visit Atlassian.com to find out which Atlassian tools are right for your team and give their products a try for free. And by Quip. Get a fresh start every day with Quip, the first subscription electric toothbrush accepted by the American Dental Association. Visit getquip.com slash twit to get your first refill pack free when you purchase any Quip electric toothbrush. And by LastPass. Make password management a priority in 2019. Secure every password-protected entry point to your business and reduce the threat of breach at lastpass.com slash twit. And by ZipRecruiter. Hire qualified candidates the smart way and take your business to the next level in 2019. Try ZipRecruiter free at ZipRecruiter.com slash twit. It's time for Twit This Week in Tech, the show we cover the week's tech news. And we have a great panel for you. We haven't seen you in about six months. Glad to welcome back Alex Wilhelm. It's good to be here. Editor-in-chief of the Crunchbase News site. And That's Alex correct. And I'm not wearing a branded t-shirt this week because I forgot to. So, you still look, in the game. You look really good. I think married life is, is good for you. Uh, engaged life. Engaged life. When is the wedding? Uh, June. <gasps> Exciting. It's, gonna, it's coming up at last. It's Congratulations. It's been impending for some time. Thank some you. people who've watched for a long time might remember we met Alex's uh, fiance, uh, Liza, who is going to be a psychiatrist. So that's appropriate. Yeah, it's and actually kind of, uh, <laughs> you're going to save a fortune. You marry what you need, I feel. <laughs> you fill. And she's a doll. She's wonderful. And lives in my childhood home. Yes. Which is bizarre. But true. Can and, you just leave uh, little Easter eggs for it? Now, if you go to the top floor, there's loose skirting behind Alex there. Alex has promised fine. to make a video. because I'm going to make a video and to show you what we've changed and improved. I want to see what's different. Yeah. So, it anyway. was there that in 1969, I watched Neil Armstrong step on the moon. It's also there that I recently hit my head on the side of the wall. You know? I mean, every home has memories. No. no, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was a British fellow by the name of Ian Thompson. He is from the register.co.uk, where he's news editor. It's great to see you, Ian. Always good fun. Happy yep. New Year. Happy New Year to you also. Compliments of the season. I'm hoping many English breakfasts for you in the Oh, year well, to come. yes. I had good, thick British bacon and eggs for breakfast this morning, yummy, yummy, so yummy. I'm quite happy and reasonably content <laughs> and drowsy. <laughs> also here. Hey, we welcome him back from his gastro nomad experience in Mexico City, Mike Elgin. Yes. So how was that, the Mexico City experience? It was New Year's Eve. Unbelievable. It was great. We did oh, New Year's fun. Eve on a rooftop overlooking Zocalo <gasps> Square. Oh, fun. And it was just like fantastic. Just oh. great. It was really, really So great. jealous. Anyway, we have gathered together to mourn the passing of Apple computers. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. Oh. Man, there was a lot of schaden. Schadenfreude was thick in the air this week when Wednesday, Apple's Tim Cook issued a letter saying, I'm sorry, but, you know, we said we were going to have $92 billion in revenue. It's only going to be $84 billion yes, in revenue. We've gone from being a huge cash machine to a slightly smaller cash machine. It did hurt their stock price. They uh, were a trillion-dollar company in August. Their uh, market cap, uh, as of t the last time I checked, 700 billion billion which They're is only the fourth different. only the fourth largest company in the world you cover this stuff for crunchbase yeah uh, i think that there's some and i everybody including of course uh john gruber and uh, uh it's funny coming out of retirement because he couldn't resist it mj siegler yes. had to mm. had to had to cover this and what the letter meant they parsed it line by line 
But give us the overview, Alex. Well, for a long time, Apple has done a fantastic job at maintaining increased profitability despite seeing its kind of unit volume numbers stop to grow. And yeah. they did that by pushing up ASPs or average selling prices across their uh, device lines. And expanding into new territories like China. Exactly. Mm. And then uh, all that stopped working all of a sudden. They had a problem <laughs> in the Chinese market. Uh, they didn't see as many upgrades as they thought they were going to. So revenue will be far lower than expected. Apple will still make a ton of money. They still have almost a quarter trillion in cash. So the company's not going anywhere, but everyone's now quite concerned about growth. And uh, the bigger story here that kind of fits on top of the Apple uh, bit is that if China's slowing down for Apple, what does that mean for other brands that sell into the market, luxury brands, other electronics brands, and also what does it mean for the global macro economic situation? So there's, a, there's an Apple story, a China story, and a broader economic story. Um, but uh, Apple's now only worth, I just looked, $703.6 billion, so they're definitely doomed uh, <laughs> no doubt. There's an even bigger, bigger story, which is that, you know, uh, since uh, Apple has been driven by iPhone profits, sales, revenue, mm -hmm. et cetera, there was always going to be a plateau and a decline of yeah. some kind because there's only so many people, only so many people are going to pay for premium phones. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, you know, a lot of people are snidely saying, oh, the whole reason is that you, uh, the phones are too expensive. Just lower the price of the phones. That's not going to do it either. That's not going to help the revenue, certainly. And so it's just, you know, I've been talking about this for a couple of years. This was going to happen. Going There's to happen. No way around. This is why I've been predicting big th new businesses like the self-driving car, like right. m maybe they need to make uh, Apple Pay cross-platform, something like that. They have to do something because phones aren't going to take them into the future on well, the same trajectory. Apple hasn't created a significant new product since the iPad. Well, I mean, there's, the there's, there's been things, the the Apple Watch, Watch, a pair of headphones. The AirPods. Oh, come on, the Watch. It's a toy. How much of Apple's revenue is watch based? Five yeah. percent, four percent, three percent? I mean, it's even less AirPods percentage. based. Uh, well, I bought but two pairs of AirPods. <laughs> well, I bought three because I keep losing them. But exactly. partly, partly, that's because it's dwarfed by the success of the iPhone. I mean, really, this is a problem every company would love to have, which is such a massively successful single product that it powers revenue for years, makes you a hugely valuable company, mm -hmm. and it's always a problem because then you need a successor, a follow up, and Apple actually has had a number of lives. I mean, if you think about it, they've had, you know, the mm. Apple II, and then they the Mac was a failure, but they, at least it was a failure, but the Mac was a failure. Then they managed to make the Mac a success. Then the iPod in the early 2000s, mm -hmm. that was a huge success. Yep. So they have managed year after year to come up with a hit, but it has been a long time since they've come up with And, and it's partly been, that's because there's been nothing no. ever in the world as successful as the iPhone. Well, the, the talk is they're going to move to services, and then Apple's going to stop Steve, selling that's increased what unit volume. Steve Cook said. Yeah. Well, Steve Cook <laughs> is probably a good guy to ask about what Apple will do. The question is how fast can they make that transition because they're not going to win the productivity wars. You've got Google and Microsoft there really butting heads. They're not going to win the cloud storage wars or the cloud computing wars. So where are they going to find a home in services that they can really expect a lot of long-term revenue growth, mm. especially at a time in which App Store revenue cuts are under attack. You have the uh, Fortnite App Store is going to take 12%. Apple wants 30. If it right. was an archaic, like, Microsoft has number. already said they're willing to go down to 85. They're willing to take 15% from some developers as well. Brilliant. Microsoft makes money other ways. Apple needs that revenue stream to keep mm. growing. So I, I don't know what's going to happen with them in the short term. It puts them in a little bit of a bind if they're going to rely on services. And self-driving cars, augmented reality, some of the other things Apple's mm -hmm. talked about aren't these are five anywhere year, near these are five ready. five year down the line projects. Yeah. They're, they're, they're not even close to being ready yet. Yeah. And in the meantime, they've. I mean, they said in their last quarterly financial results, yeah, we're not actually going to report on units shipped anymore, just right. on revenues, which was basically a sign that, yeah, we're just going to be relying on jacking up the price and profit taking. Well, and the existing phones Another way enough. of spinning no it is saying that the unit sales are not really what's driving income going forward. They're flat. What we're going to take a look at is how much money we make per customer. Hmm. And that's a, I think that's not an unreasonable thing to do. A lot of companies do it at Microsoft doesn't break down unit sales. Google doesn't break down unit sales. Nope. Uh, it, it is maybe, especially in this new world for Apple, more appropriate to look at revenue per customer. Well, but, it, but, but look, we knew Apple was going to, I have to say, there, a lot of this is just schadenfreude. Oh, mm -hmm. a trillion dollar company, A. Eh? We'll show you, A. <clears> eh? We knock to, That's what we do. We build people up to knock them down. That's kind of the way it is. I mean, we're not going to solve human nature on this show. <laughs> no. but we can at least understand that it's we part of it. We can try. We can yeah. try. It is part of it. I do have a philosophy degree. So, so there's a legitimate... Mm -hmm. uh, so you were right. Celebrate. Take a victory lap, Mike Elgin. Yes. Uh, Apple's been was been facing this problem for... A couple of years, and they have yet to come up with a successor. I've heard people say this is Tim Cook's fault. 
Uh, he should. He didn't. He hasn't come up with a follow up. You even kind of implied that because well, Apple hasn't I mean, had a. Okay, he's not quite Scully levels of bad. He's very good at keeping the the business running and you know and, and making and, it and profitable. No, he's a great operations guy, but he's not an innovations guy. And Johnny Ive appears to have basically given up. I think up. he's retired. He's yeah, semi-retired he's, now. Right, so cashing checks is a full time job. Yeah, but exactly. This is, this is know, the innovator's dilemma. This is the classic <laughs> dilemma for all companies, especially tech companies. Mm. It's hard to reinvent yourself many times. And Apple's done it, but... Apple's done it more than most. More than most. Well, one thing we should all look inside ourselves and question is whether, how invested are we in the success of this corporation? I mean, they're, yes, they're iconic. Yes, Steve Jobs' career was amazing. Yes, they've they've impressed us. Yes, we've all been Apple fans at some point or another, but it's a corporation. Oh, Come on, why? why right. is, I mean, <laughs> that's the problem, though. I think a lot of Apple fans really do have an investment. It's about identity. An emotional investment. It's about yeah. identity. Yeah. And, and Apple's been good at capitalizing on that. They became a, a brand, of, a fashion brand. Yeah. There is a limited number of people with both the passion and the money to pay the Cupertino idiot tax again and again and again every <laughs> hey, year. I, I do love Calm their down, building. Stop calling me an idiot on air. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I just bought a Pixel 3. I moved the iPhone to the Pixel 3. And, you know, Google is selling a fraction of the Pixel phones that Apple is selling iPhones. Mm. They're probably losing money on it. It's still a great phone. Apple so, sells more phones in a month fine. than Google sold all year. Yeah, absolutely. But one thing that's caught my eye during this entire brouhaha was how we're behind talking about this now. If you look at global smartphone shipments over the last couple of years, they've been this flat. Been coming. We should have been expecting this. We were. Well, we all were. I, I mean, but I don't think I've been we saying were, this for it, years. Okay, so Mike's suddenly. been saying it for years. I mean, it feels sudden. Yeah. I, I don't mm -hmm. think we're shocked that there was a plateau to smartphone sales. There's a limited number of people who can afford them. But I feel like this conversation wasn't as uh, was concrete it? Yeah. as it should have been. We should have been more honest about this. But I mean, one problem that we have is that the old iPhones are so damn good. Or damn good. Sorry, I apologize, everyone. Um, like my 7 Plus that I still have, is, I'm going to keep it till it dies because my why mom would I ever change it? Mm. Took advantage. This is one of the factors Tim Cook mentioned in his letter. Took advantage of the battery replacement. Yeah. $29. He said we got more people than we thought would do that and that those people did not upgrade. She's calls her iPhone 6 her beloved iPhone 6, oh. yeah. does not want to change it. She likes having a headphone jack. Exactly. The new battery made it as fast as it you know as it mm -hmm. ever was. Yeah, yeah th th this is the iPad problem that they've had. The iPads are so durable and long-lasting. It's like, who needs a new one? It's really not that different. Mm. And and with that battery replacement, it was so inexpensive. It's such a no-brainer. It kind of turned iPhones into iPads because that battery was the thing that started right. killing you after a couple of years. Right. Know? And so, yeah. And that does raise the issue if Apple did that on purpose, because Apple was slowing down phones. They got caught, but they were slowing down phones but, with older batteries. But here again is an unmitigated benefit to consumers mm. yeah. and, and the environment, because th the, yes, the fewer exactly. phones that are manufactured, the better the, it is for them. These are not less e waste and the rest of it. So, so, this battery thing is a good thing for, for Apple to lose money on it and have trouble partly because of that. So, what? So, yeah. what? it's a good thing. So, you're saying if Apple becomes, say, IBM in a decade, mm. so what? <laughs> so, what? It's well, still a massive money-making machine, yeah. you know, but at the same time, you know, as you say, pe people are replacing their batteries. And also, Tim Cook blamed China a little bit on this, and I was kind of skeptical, and then I talked to friends out there, and Apple is now becoming, in fact, buying any American technology in China is almost seen as disloyal in some circles. Yeah. This is the new backlash. Um, yeah. Remember, in fact, this happened uh, uh, New Year's mm. Eve, the Huawei... <laughs> PR team that mm. tweeted New Year's greetings not from a Huawei phone but from an iPhone yes. yeah. and got busted and yeah. two employees got demoted because of it uh, because it's seen as disloyal. Yeah, It's not merely, you know, your company's mad at you. The Chinese People thought of it as disloyal, and right? And you were to saying we're coming up to peak yeah. smartphone, Huawei released their released that letter and they're saying, no, we're expecting 30% increase in smartphone sales because they're not Hyper expensive. Well, partly yeah. what's eating Apple's lunch is the very inexpensive but very high quality yeah. Chinese if, if you're phones. willing to pay half the cost and get 90% yeah. of the functionality, it's a no-brainer. No one needs Face ID, really. No one nah. needs em emojis. No one needs... Ugh. I don't have any of those. And I've never missed them once. No. Yeah. Maybe I'm getting old. Do you miss like, them, uh, Mike? You've switched to an Android. The, uh, the, and no, none of those things. And, and <laughs> I, I actually, I'm so happy. I've never a received an emoji uh, text from you, actually. Yeah, yeah, you're not going to. I was know. talking to my mom, and I did turned on the emoji of my face. She says, stop it. What are you doing? Stop that. <laughs> Why are you a talking pile of feces? Well, yeah, yeah. What? Oh, wait, yes. that, that's, that's, that's she quite said, normal, that looks actually. like poop. <laughs> she said, stop it. So, no, I mean, it's innovation. Yeah. Innovation. You know, it's, um, courage. What they've added is, yes, courage. The, the courage in making you buy dongles that you immediately lose. 
And it's gimmicks like face so ID. So there is, and especially among people <clears throat> like you, a certain amount of joy in this announcement that Apple's not going to be joy. Quite as, joy is is it's just like Schadenfreude's the right a, a sort word. Of finally, a, they're a getting the message. <laughs> finally, <laughs> well, I mean, I, I'm I, this is a prob probably an unpopular opinion, but I think that all of the success of Apple is due to one person, Steve Jobs. Yeah. I mean, it, it, we're I just coasting evidence. after the post Steve I Jobs think there's era. There's evidence. Mm. It iPhone was so good. Was Steve Jobs is other than the building, which is also amazing. That the, right. the circular spaceship building, the iPhone, maybe arguably the iPad, but the iPhone was his last genius yeah. move to go into a whole. I was critical of it back in 2000, whatever. Seven. It was well brilliant. before that. I was critical and said, "Oh, come on!" It's, I did it's, the same the thing. Phone the worst business. business so you don't want. To, I yeah. said the same thing. You don't want to get in that business. Exactly. Yeah. It's, yeah. A, it's a disaster. What a what a catastrophe! And to be fair, the first iPhone was a real dog, apart from the user interface. But the vision of it all and the execution of it all over time was just mm. ki absolutely obviously perfect. killer perfection. And yeah. I want to talk about the Schaden Schadenfreude thing, though. I don't think people are That really is a German word, for those who don't know, that means the shameful joy at the misfortune of others. Except for the shame part. Um, <laughs> the, the thing about that is I don't take any joy at a company doing poorly. I don't particularly care if Microsoft is better than Apple. What I do want to point out though, and, and cop to is that Apple fanboys being sad is fine by me. That probably yeah. brings me a little bit of joy. Uh -huh. Because they, they've been banging this drum forever about how Apple's better than everyone else, even though it's not. It's great, mm. but other companies are good too. And to see this happen is a bit of like, you see, they're immortal over a, a, one Apple way or whatever. Because um, there's just people at a corporation. So the right. fanboys drive me nuts. Apple, I don't particularly care about. I'll use whatever PC is best. Currently, it's a Windows 10 gaming rig and this MacBook Pro. That's all I need. Yeah. But I don't care more than that. Just the people drive me nuts. What's the German word for shameless? Joy the shameless joy. <laughs> I just yeah, looked yeah. up Schadenfreude. There is an English word that means the same thing, which is unusual because a lot of German words, there's no translation. It's epicaracy. That's not quite as uh, fun epicaracy. to say. I've never heard it. Epic it comes from the Greek epi upon kara, joy, and kakon, evil. I don't the see that catching on. <laughs> I think we're going to stick with the German on this I one. don't even really want to make that the, the title of the Twit episode because yeah. no one will remember it. Epicaracy. Yeah. You see, one of my favorite German words is, is it backflenschinch, which is, uh, is used to describe a, a face that should be slapped. <laughs> which is, every time I see I've Hugh got one of those. Yeah, I mean, every, every time I see Hugh do. Thompson at the RSA conference, it's just like, yeah, there's a face made for punching. Yes. And it's just... Um, I think you mispronounced it, but I don't yeah, know. It's I, got a lot of syllables. It does, yeah, I mean, they were <laughs> first in the queue when it came to the syllables for that word. <laughs> yes. So... Uh, Look, they're so fine. We, we're in an interesting situation right now, though, I think in technology, where it looks like, and maybe this is always the case, because you know, just as fish aren't aware of the water, we're not aware of our you know, limited scope. It looks like companies like Google and Facebook have gotten to the point where they can't fail. They can't wear out. They can't, there's no business uh, cycle applicable to them. I don't know. I think they're in both of those cases. You're looking at firm. They're well, not history would tell you that they're not going to fight. They're they're into the gradual decline. You know, this is sort of into the nursing home. There's not going to be years. another Google coming along. Another search engine coming along. There's not going to no, be another know, Facebook coming. Just as Facebook destroyed MySpace, nobody's going to come along and destroy Facebook. Or is I, I'm I, trying. I, I disagree. <laughs> um, I, yeah. I, I don't know. You probably don't know this because you're not on Facebook. But uh, <laughs> but I'm I'm doing this. Uh, I'm quitting Facebook slowly. So. If, in in July, I'm quitting. That's called not quitting. Yeah. I might add. No, I did that I, with drinking just, for ages. Yeah, <laughs> right. I'm still working on it. No, but it, it's like Walt Mar Mossberg. Uh, four days after I wrote this big post about uh, mm. about why I'm doing it, said, "Oh, I don't want to convince anybody else." He quit. Didn't oh, he? he did. Mm. But I want to convince everyone to get off Facebook, Instagram, uh, WhatsApp, and and Messenger because they're just. I've they're already just done that. Horrible. I know you've done it. I tried to. Re <clears throat> so I bought the Facebook portal devices. You were the yes. one. I was the one. <laughs> no, because I had to. I thought, well, it's good to review it anyway. They're and not, actually, they're, they're not talking good. about unit sales either. If they mm. weren't tied to Facebook, I think they'd be pretty remarkable. Yes. Mm. Um, the problem is, I can't get my money back. <laughs> <laughs> I've written to them. They said thirty day money back. That thirty days has passed. I wrote to them. They said, okay, fine. Why do you want to get rid of it? 
I said, because I don't like you or something. <laughs> and and I, and I sent them the invoice. I said, we need to see your order. I sent them. And then I never heard from them again. And now I realize it's because I don't have a Facebook account. I'm oh, caught yeah. in some weird... That is, that is not... They have a shadow profile on you that's a mile long. I know. They, they know, know exact, who I am. They know it's where not, you are right now. Yeah. 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 Like, so why can't I get my money back? Because they don't want to. No. <laughs> We're well, we sold a pair of them, it's and we're more, not giving your money back. It's, it's a lot more profitable just to just, just to put you money. through. And, and, and well, anybody wants thing. a Facebook? See, so, it's no, no good I to think, me because I don't have a Facebook. Suddenly, they have no data on you. But you see, like, I you're think, the only person <laughs> that I have data on. I think Facebook. Yeah, all of a sudden, they yeah. can't find you, yeah. Leo. I don't know. We don't know who this guy well, is. Who are you? You're not on Facebook. Can I, I touch on why Google could? struggle if not fail but struggle and yeah. one thing that people don't keep tabs on is every quarter google reports earnings and they show off two numbers that are very important one is the number of paid clicks they've had mm -hmm. always goes up and they also show the cost per click for those paid clicks which always goes down yeah mm -hmm. because they're driving more mobile clicks from search w over time which is good for them but they're worth less per click and mm -hmm. so eventually there will come a day in which the price per click goes down they still pay you if you click something N maybe that's that's taboola i think that's how that works <laughs> Uh, but there's a time which these curves no longer work in Google's favor and doesn't actually generate revenue growth. At that point in time, they'll be where Apple is now, still hugely profitable, still doing very well, mm -hmm. but not the same engine that they were before. And that's going to change the corporate culture, how they push product development. So I have a very business. simplistic point of view, which is, well, nobody can duplicate their search engine. But you're making a very accurate point that that's not their revenue source. The revenue source is paid clicks. Paid yeah. clicks. Yeah. Uh, and of course, I think Google realizes it because there's a frenzied search for the next big thing at Google. I mean, that's yeah. clearly yeah. a big deal for them. Nest, Verily, mm. the cloud thingy, yeah. the, the drones, Waymo, and whatever. The whole alphabet yeah. structure. Right. Yeah. yeah. But you see, I think Facebook's problem is that it, it won't you know, get overtaken immediately, but it's being cut off from both the bottom and the top. Younger people aren't going to Facebook. They're actively it's deleting. Problem they're they're, they're deleting that. their accounts, yeah. and okay, they're going to Instagram, which Facebook happens to own, but that's not going to work anymore because Facebook isn't going to be allowed to buy up the competition in the same way that it used to. They're not. No. Nah. Who's going to stop them? The regulators. Mm -hmm. you, they, Facebook has pissed in off America? so many people in Congress at the moment. That's true. That they are. I think we should have going to face case. a very tough time. Yeah. On yeah, Facebook buys pissed off until Facebook starts writing checks. Yeah, I'm well, not sure that there is that. Wait, wait. The cases. Oh, sorry. But also at the upper end of the scale, and this is something I noticed because. My parents were on Facebook, and or my parents were on Facebook. Well, you use it but to when keep in touch with people in the yeah, UK. Yeah, which I and I do, but I'm seeing a lot of the older generation with the privacy stuff that's been coming out now. I kind of like, you know what? I was fine with just email, and they're downgrading their accounts. the The app in particular, my mum took the took the app off her phone, and a bunch of her friends did because they were worried that it was listening to them. And so I told, her, that I told them it didn't happen. But no, no, actually. We may not have been listening to them, but we're now seeing a number of stories that even oh, there's if you, data correlation, but yeah. the idea that they'll be you, you these could shadow profiles are very be real. listened on. It's, data yeah. correlation is not something I want to have happen on my phone without yeah. my permission. I feel, but I, I agree with this entirely. I get in, get that's interesting Facebook that is, they're that aware. Mm. Is that because of you? Uh, they do read my copy, yes. So I don't mm. know if, if every if every eighty year old is, is is doing it, but I, I mean, a lot of I mean, we, they said themselves they've had a massive number of people deleting the app, yeah. and that's really going to hurt them long term. And I have an alternative, but why don't you go first and then? Oh, I was just going to say, my mom is the most active Facebook user in my family, and she's the least tech savvy. So yeah, I maybe mean, that's, that's the not the demographic you want if you want a cool product that will persist long term. That well, yeah, right. but if what my you want awesome, is though. is to sell. <laughs> Uh, advertising, <clears throat> there is a case to be made for a less tech-savvy audience. Uh, 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 I was told at Tech TV that we don't want tech-savvy people because they don't uh, buy brands. Oh, they search for the right. best product at the best price. You don't want that. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's give me an a bad idea. idea. Give me an impulse buyer who doesn't know fact, what they're doing. Yeah, like yeah. Honestly, I don't know about Facebook, but Instagram, one of the reasons I got off is because I made so many impulse buys on Instagram. Yeah. You really? do buy stuff. I bought Instagram I underwear. You, I bought Instagram everything. <laughs> Their advertising is amazing. It's it so really accurate. Works. They know exactly what I want. It's like so honestly. Scary. You see, I make a point. If I see an advert on Facebook, I deliberately don't buy it via Facebook. Yeah, it's just like me being bloody minded. That's why they don't like people like you. Yeah, <laughs> that's the whole problem. Well, there is a. I don't know if there's a term for it, but there is a thing called banner blindness. Oh. Uh, I was just reading about this, where people just don't see banner ads. I know I don't see banner ads. And I think that is almost like you, a willful desire, which is a shame because I am in an ad-supported business. Well, but a willful I. desire as, no, no, as not I, to really see <laughs> advertisers, right? 
But yeah, I mean, it's. I think there is a kickback against it, and particularly when people get more and more creeped out by, the, as you say, the shadow profiles and the amount of targeting that goes on. I think that generally does creep a lot of people out, and it'll it it will come round and hurt them in the end. Yeah. What I'm fascinated by is the fact that people think that it's impossible to replicate Facebook's reach, which it is not actually. Mm. Um, I've I've it created this idea called the Nice Book. Which is a Google? <laughs> is it simply a shared folder? Is it on Google, Google Photos, Plus? Google Photos. Okay, close. <laughs> Closest thing that still exists. Dude. I have to say, Dude, when Mike, Google Mike, Plus, if when, you don't know, is a huge Google Plus. When, when they yeah. kill Google Plus, I did think of you, and it was just First like person I Mike is going to be yeah, punching a wall He's right now. Like these Apple people when they find out the Tim Cook's letter. So to you the, use Google <laughs> Photos as a social so network? I have a single folder called Mike Elgin's Nice Book. Oh, I've seen stuff yeah. coming through my phone. See, everybody gets it. Everybody gets it. <laughs> I don't get it. All right, I'll, Wait a I'll, minute, I'll that is you. so weird. I was wondering what those notifications yeah, were. Yeah, it's irritating, isn't it? I no. get comments because <laughs> I'm somehow in your nice book. Yes. I get those comments on my phone. Right, right. So I've invited what everybody is, on Facebook to, jo done? to join me. I post pictures of, you know, my personal life, my, my you know, squishy face, all, like, all this stuff. And then f until July, I'm going to be posting those on Facebook so that people can click through to my uh -huh. nice book. Mm -hmm. Mike but, Elgin's nice book. There it is. How did it get there? Oh, you shared them I, with I me. I shared it. I didn't even have to say yes. That's right. <laughs> That's so the best you're part, pushing Leo. content but, there. But if anybody anybody who wants to join it can join it. It's like completely open to the public. But why join it? I'm getting it anyway. Well, well you don't you have to join got it. The, the deluxe you edition. Got exactly. Oh. So it's 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 all thing. the good things about Facebook. You share photos and comments and things like people can like it and all that stuff without any of the disinformation, the fake news, the Russian probably whatever, the 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 manipulation, the, the lying, the ads, none of that <laughs> stuff. It's the best part of Instagram. Yeah, and, and there's comments. It can be, the notifications can go through the app and also through email, which means it has three times the reach of Facebook. Three times as many people mm -hmm. can, can see my nice book so, as can see Facebook. So if I set this up, I would have to add people by their email. You, this actually, I just read an article about this being a problem that you don't have to say yes it's a harassment problem. Yeah, right. they can share. You know, I get already a ridiculous amount of harassment on on uh, Google's Hangouts. Yeah, it's very easy for people. I get right. so-called women. They're ne I'm sure never women. You know, saying "Hey, baby," but it's always in French because my because my name's Laporte. <laughs> 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 so it's easy to ignore. But uh, and that they even try to call. I mean, I even yeah. get calls. Yes. Oh, sure. This is a but, problem. But but in this, with this concept, you can block anybody. Mm -hmm. and it's easy to do, but you don't have to invite anybody necessarily. You can just put the, it'll give you a link. You say, here, everybody, here's the link, and they can just join if they yeah. want to. They can set their own notifications. Mm -hmm. The difficulty of interacting is it's e actually easier than Facebook. The quality of the photos is like 10 times better than right. Facebook. Everything about it is better than Facebook. So I'm just going to see if this works. I like that because what I've wanted since I deactivated Instagram is just my public Instagram page mm -hmm. without the social element. And everyone goes, that's a blog, dude. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, yes, but I don't want to set a blog up. I want you to do it for me. I just want to upload right. photos to it. Maybe this is going to be my middle ground. I kind of like the idea. It's so it's, easy and fun. Do you think there's much scope for a paid social network? Because we were arguing about this in the pub the, uh, before Christmas. And it's yeah. like, I don't honestly think people are willing to pay for a social network. I don't like it at all because the, the people have different levels of ability to pay. And so you're, mm. you're, you're creating this... Uh, yeah. You're creating this no, elite true. thing. And I've was, always supported remember that. Remember app.net? Yeah, pay, pay walls like, never bother me, that. yeah. So, by the way, Mike, just as a little tip, you could also make a blog this way. Google's Drive, Google Drive's sharing system also has the same permissions problem. Somebody can share with you. You yes. don't have to accept it. And if you only have view permissions, you can't remove yourself from the share. Right. This is from an article in How To Geek. They, they said they would fix it, though, and we'll see if they do. But, yeah, that's a really weird problem. There's yeah. actual – I read that, and I'm like, there's spam in Google Drive? There that's will weird. always be spam. Where yeah. there is a display, there shall be Spam is like spam. water. It can't uh, – so but like, the oh, same thing could happen. Spam, now, I have to point out, they've spam. got to fix it in photos, too. Because let's say you were an abusive spouse and you right. wanted to use this yeah. to harass somebody. You could yeah. do that. Mm -hmm. So, um, on the other hand, I like being part of Mike's nice book, but... I like the name of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's all, it's everything uh, that Facebook has, but only the nice parts. Yeah. It's hysterical. Nice. And, and that, there's all these comments. Yeah. What was weird is I was getting notifications for the comments. Yeah. 
and I didn't even know why. Yeah, I I, I immediately went and did a, a how-to about how to adjust your <laughs> notifications because I was kind of, <laughs> speaking of spam, like yeah, you yeah, say. Yeah, you're going to get some stuff. notes from people. Why am I so. getting Happy New Year, Mike and Amira, in my notification? <laughs> Don't you want to know that someone else wishes him Happy know, New Year? Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's just like Twitter when they say, oh, this other person liked somebody else's thing. I'm yeah. like, I don't care. That's, that's the funny bit about all this. I've been talking a lot of smack on Twitter about how I'm, like, I'm off of Instagram now, deleted my Facebook account, and I'm like, but I'm telling you on Twitter, which I am right. horribly right. addicted to. Exactly. Yeah. Well, just plug that into my veins. If you're a journalist, I mean, you, yeah. there's no escaping. Yeah. yeah. I think I it's mean, hard to ignore, though, the Twitter abuse is the one I can't on give up. Twitter. You know, yeah, it is. Uh, I mean, Twitter, you could make the argument, oh, the you know, Arab Spring, they keep bringing that up. And, yeah. But I can bring up so many more cases where people have killed themselves over bullying on Twitter. Yep. The abuse that happens, the abuse I get and others get. I mean, I was happy. I have never been happier leaving a network than Twitter. Yeah. It was I a little know. hard to leave Instagram and Facebook, but Twitter, that was easy. Yeah, you see, I've never had an Instagram, an Instagram account. I couldn't see the point of it. If, if well, pictures are... How, how annoying I don't take that many picture pictures, be. but yeah, yeah you know. It's, you pictures know, part, are nice, but then I right. started feeling bad because everybody's life looked better than mine. It, exactly. Everybody feels that way, and it's just an inevitable part of human nature. But mm. I, another part of human nature that's driving some of this is, and, and we're all guilty. Everybody at this table is guilty of this. We have a bias for the new. Mm -hmm. And old stuff yeah. is like, because I tell, what's it's the solution? Our well, mind. it's RSS. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. email newsletters. It's mm -hmm. all this old stuff. And Works nobody, great. Nobody wants to talk about it, but that's the solution, actually. Well, try finding a decent RSS reader now. There's basically Feedly and that's it. I, I use we, Google. We've had to write our own. Right. I have a Pixel. Really? I, yeah. have, I have a Pixel book, and I just have a, an extension that turns, you know, just becomes an RSS reader. It's you know like, what's yeah. the uh, the last bastion of RSS? Podcasting. Podcasting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good point. That's right. Yeah. I mean, that's the only. That's how people know we have a new show is RSS. Right. Well, ironically, they don't know it, but they're subscribing to it. Look, how, look how great it works. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It works it's great. very effective. It's yeah. worked for twelve years. Yeah, yeah. No, I think I email newsletters are coming back because Axios, the new uh, well, newish media company, has built their entire platform on short form articles right. sent yeah. out through newsletters. It's brilliant. Yeah. What? That's how Axios works now. Yeah. So if you read through their website, it's kind of like the same chunks you can see inside of newsletters. They'll send out to you in the mornings or the afternoons. And so it's oh, kind of a that brilliant morning setup. newsletter I used to get that from Axios. It yeah, was quite should, good. Uh, What's his name? Mike or Dan Premack? Dan Dean Premack. Uh, that was the fast. VC newsletter. That was yeah, and then Mike Allen has a wake up to what matters from Mike Allen every day. Yeah, Axios is fun but they the newsletters are their jam and yeah. they've been around since like what 85 yeah I, i've been saying for a long time also that the best social network by far is email mm -hmm. and so email newsletters mm -hmm. is one avenue of that people need to spend more time managing their 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 filters and all that kind of stuff that's and the email problem can be beautiful yeah, yeah. You, if you i have one it. filter that says if there's unsubscribe in the body of this message stick it over I here that's it. all of your newsletters yeah. are ending up in that folder but okay. at least they're all there i could i find was wondering it. where they were going <laughs> <laughs> that's how he broke through the noise he shared his photos i'm going to remove the unsubscribe <laughs> Get I think it's a gdpr oh, I violation say that. <laughs> i shouldn't say that um well, well that's a great filter by the way yeah highly yeah. recommend it yeah. it's just a new it's a newsletter filter and, yeah. But I think a lot, I'm some, people always tell me, Jason Calacanis used to say, click-through rate of newsletters, fantastic. He's, yeah. His whole business is now newsletters. It, uh, mm -hmm. You know what it but is I don't mind? get it. I don't want uh, to, I, maybe I get too many newsletters. My, my click-through rate is typically f uh, 58%. You mean your open rate? Uh, my open rates, 58%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the click rate is, I mean, it's astronomical. That's for, nuts. Yeah. That's so good. I mean, you, like, think about Facebook. You, your, your stuff ends up in the news feeds of about 5% of the, people that here's the problem a lot of that though in this i'm looking at now at my my subscriptions folder is advertising sur la table it's instant pot 60 percent off uh you know american uh, thinker democrats is pretty good mm. uh, yeah no see this is why i can't read these <laughs> yeah because yeah, i will then on. buy an instant exactly. pot and, and forget that oh i bought one last year is, and the year before and the year before that why are all people their, so into their insta pot? i don't know it's a pressure cooker they're amazing though but if we oh, just took on. if we just took leo's credit card Another instant i think boy. the internet will be safe again that might be the only thing we need to do <laughs> well i just don't look at it anymore <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, this is all the newsletters. The problem is the good stuff, like the here's Jessica Lesson's uh, information newsletter. Yes. I want to read, but that's well, buried you're in. You're paying all of for these. it. You should read it. I know, four hundred dollars yeah. a year, uh, and I'm sure I'm getting Mike's list, uh, and you know, and Stacey Higginbotham's list. Who's fantastic? So who mm -hmm. are these people 
that are reading these because clearly I most of my newsletters are junk, man. It's people who don't get paid to be informed because if you don't right. get paid to be informed and you work at a, at a, at a uh. job where you click buttons and put things in spreadsheets, mm -hmm. you want a digest in the morning you can read on the commute or mm -hmm. at the coffee spot to yep. get caught up. And so us at this table, we get paid to know stuff, right. which is a great, great job to be clear. But like that's why a newsletter roundup for me is ridiculous. So I don't need it. Look, I get the Times in print in Providence every day. Uh, well, five days a week. And so I read it, and often I'm like, oh, this is just last night's news. I know. <laughs> Every this, time this, I get the Sunday Times, I've read all this. Yeah. Yeah. I've read all this. This happened again? Oh, no. They're but Liza loves it because yeah. Liza has a job that's not centered around being on Twitter 24 hours a day. And so for her, it's fantastic. This is why tech pundits should not be talking about tech. So we, we should, should talk um, about golf, something we don't know anything about. That's the <laughs> for a good walk I ruined. But yeah, you know. <laughs> anyway, let's take a break. Uh, great panel here, actually. It's so not, I don't know why. How did we get out of the habit of? Oh, it's because half the time you're in Providence. No, the last time I was on, you were on vacation, and I Ian, and oh, Ian yeah. was hosting. So it's, so it's really nice to see Alex Wilhelm. He is uh, editor there, uh, editor in chief of uh, Crunchbase News. And obviously, if you want to know financial news, especially, that's a really great place yeah. to go. What is the URL? Uh, News.crunchbase.com okay. or crunchbase.news, however you want to do it. I like .news. Yeah, but it's kind of those weird custom TLDs that still seem a little cheap do to Do people me. don't? Yeah. So I set up an email address, which is .email, uh -huh. and Lisa won't use it. She says, what is that? You mean <laughs> .com? So no, .email. We are very classist about our uh, TLDs, I feel. Mm -hmm. I thought all emails should be .email. Uh, yeah, I mean, it depends, really. It's honestly, you'd say classes about TLDs, classes about emails as well. We were, sure. we got, we were getting resumes in to hire a new journalist. One guy sent his resume, he was using a Hotmail account. Well, see, that's and bad. I, was I like, thought that goes straight to the bin. That's bad. <laughs> you know, it's not even Outlook.com. Just yeah. get rid of that. Yeah. I mean, AOL.com. Okay, so yeah, it's not quite AOL levels of bad, yeah. but it's still bad. Yeah. So if I get an email from Leo at Leo email i'm not going to open it I'm gonna really like, that's spam yeah, I, yeah you'd think spam mm -hmm. i would immediately oh. think i'm going to get fished here and i'm going to be embarrassed so and... i set up a, my own mail server at home this helm thing mm -hmm. and i have a special email address and you know what i love about it i get no email mm. i don't even it's not even that i don't get spam i get no email yeah. no newsletters <laughs> nothing from you guys it's great if only they could build a physical mailbox for the front of their house that never could accept <laughs> No, mail. but then people send crappy things to your physical mailbox and stuff it Something's full. Going, something has gone wrong in my brain because I have started learning Spencerian penmanship with a fountain pen. Mm -hmm. I'm getting off social networks. I got post, you know, uh, note cards that I send out notes i think i'm 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 retreating to the victorian you're era. wearing a sweater with buttons on air <laughs> <laughs> you should have a telegraph wire come to your house next time you're gonna, you're gonna have one of those sort of moustaches yeah. like that and a top hat I, 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 prostitutes. Like, I am a refugee like, from the 21st century yeah that's uh, i join you that sounds you know what amazing think about it yeah not such a bad idea yeah. hey, neil stevenson was there with if you've read diamond age neil stevenson's yeah. book we, where we regressed to neo-victorians i technology. want all the it's, medical care you know all the right. science yeah, true. Victoria, dentistry. victorian dentistry is i want the good. dentistry yes. but i don't want any of this social media super fast always connected stuff like the village like m night uh, yeah, what's his name? The village, Shamalama mm -hmm. Shamal Ding Dong. <laughs> that guy. They, that, they, <laughs> they, they, they moved out of the real world to an old 18th century world, right. and they raised their kids that way. Yeah, and when you need something, you send the blind girl out yeah, into the real world. Yeah, send her out to get some medicine. Yeah. <laughs> what is this thing? Is it a movie? Yeah. yeah. A, oh, yeah. Fantastic. We just spoiled bizarre. it for you, by the yeah. way. Yeah. Now I'm not going to watch no it. No need to watch it now. We should, <laughs> we should do this ad eventually. All of Shamalama Ding Dong's movies have twist endings. That's right. So you really should never... It's always a spoiler to After talk After the about. break, we can spoil the rest of them. If yeah, you well, if you'd like. This will be a fun There twist. are dead people. Yeah. I, yes, I've seen that one. <laughs> Bruce right. Willis and all his right, career. All right, all right, <laughs> I'm, yeah. Our show today brought to you by, sorry about the spoilers, kids. <laughs> but if you haven't seen The Village, forget everything I said and go see it. It is actually a great movie. Yeah. Uh, this, this Today's show brought to you by Atlassian. Now, this is a part of the 21st century I'm, I'm liking. Staying competitive, competitive in a cloud-based world means your teams need to work together and execute faster. Your IT team does, and Atlassian empowers everything we do in IT. Uh, it's the company behind Jira, of course, and every developer knows Jira for agile development. But we also use Confluence. We use Bitbucket. Uh, we use Jira to keep track of punch lists, things that need to be done to communicate. Atlassian uses software 
to manage complex collaboration, and it does it so beautiful. It's the technology backbone that helps modern IT organizations plan, service, and support the kind of change that propels the business. And it doesn't have to be really an IT organization. We use Confluence for our engineering staff so that they can keep track of what's going on with the equipment, what's going on with the network. It's DevOps, it's agile development, it's IT apps and ops, ITSM, and whatever is next, an affordable and this important, affordable, reliable suite of tools, Jira Software, Confluence, and Bitbucket. At last, he informs the backbone of effective cross-team project planning, organization, and communication. And don't forget Jira Ops and Ops Genie and Status Page, which helps you keep track of incidents, alert response teams, coordinate response efforts to resolve issues faster, and keep customers or stakeholders like me updated. Your team could choose tools that are right for your current framework while trusting that as you grow, they will grow with you. And of course, it all integrates right into Jira and Confluence. So you don't have to go from platform to platform. Everything you need is right there. We love Atlassian. And, and of course, you will too. And like all of Atlassian's products, the, tool, the tools for your IT team are easy and easy to configure, easy to set up, and free to try. So go to Atlassian.com and find out what's right for you. Atlassian.com for IT. Unleash your IT team with Atlassian's collaboration software tools. You know what I love about Atlassian? What? Their ticker symbol in the stock market is team. Oh, which that's is like cool. the best vanity license yeah. plate ever. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> you know tickers. I do. I, I pulled it up to double check actually before I said that on the air to make sure that I no, wasn't I like wrong. That. But you yeah, have to. Like I know thing. AAPL. Yeah. Apple. Right? Uh, Facebook is F book, right? F B. F B. Mm-hmm. F book would be better. F book that would be, yeah. describes how we feel about it. Um, <laughs> but most most companies have like Netflix, NFLX. They don't have like jokey. No, no. Yeah, AT and T yeah, yeah. had T. That was cool. That was quite yeah. good. That's like they were the first stock ever. Probably Salesforce has CRM. Oh, that's good. It's quite good. Mm -hmm. It's witty. Uh, if you're into financial tech jokes, uh, which is me <laughs> and uh, three I was going to say that's a very world. limited audience. <laughs> you're the king. You're the king. Oh man. Uh, let's see. Uh, have we done they are all the with it, Apple stuff? The Apple Store, as Apple was quick to point out, this is, I guess, one of their oh, yes, services. The very next day, that press release. And this yeah. was interesting. I got I got this press release about the Apple Store capping off a blockbuster Christmas weekend, and Google flagged it up as potentially uh, spam, spam <laughs> wow. and phishing. That's terrible. And so I got in contact, because I get my Apple releases from Apple UK, because Apple US hate us. And <laughs> so, um, Apple, I contacted my contacts at Apple UK, and it's like, mate, seriously, you've just been identified as a phishing email by Google. It's like... I don't think we've been virus. It's like, no, I don't think you've been virus. I just think Google is playing silly, but, you know, they're getting too many false That's positives from something. Oh, maybe, you know, that is that is true. They take signals from users. It yeah. could be a lot of users were saying. Yeah, spam, exactly. Spam, spam, spam. $1.2 billion spent during the holiday period and a new single day record on New Year's Day. It's always a good time for Apple because people get new devices for the holidays and then mm. rush to the app store. But that is a spectacular That's amount a of money. That's a lot of fart apps. Uh, <laughs> and flashlight apps. Are, yeah. Aren't they mostly free? $322 million on New Year's Day alone. 322 And remember, Apple gets a third of that. Yeah. Well, just under. A little under. 30%. Well, one thing every venture capitalist does on Christmas morning and New Year's Day is pull up the app store rankings and see who's performing the best. Mm -hmm. so you can see if, if Amazon... Those apps are shooting to the top of the app stores. Right. You can presume high uh, volume there, better platform for startups, et cetera. So it's kind of fun to see this from both the inside the app store perspective and also from the uh, the meta perspective, which is how much total volume and through. Um, but I think the 30% cut will mm. not last another year. No, Apple they're going to have to change it. Just the market forces alone are forcing them down. They don't own enough of the market to demand... Um, is it monopsony pricing or is it mon monopoly uh, pricing? Yeah, or duopoly if, they, if you're taking into them and Android. On the other yeah. hand... Yeah. Uh, if you're an app developer, you're willing to give them, in many cases, willing to give them that 30% because you're on a platform that makes you money. Look at Fortnite, for crying out loud. But Fortnite now has its own yeah, store. They, that's well, they didn't like it, but on the other hand, honestly, yeah, they would probably prefer to be on, as they are on Android, on the Apple Store without giving Apple a cut. But right. I think they're also pretty happy about the amount of money they've made. True. But then all of a sudden you need to grow a little faster, hit the numbers, and that 30% mm. seems a lot bigger than it did when you were just happy to have someone else distill your apps for you. When your brand yeah. well, What is, is the pressure? Enough. How can they bring enough pressure to Apple to make them change that? Well, I mean, one of the stories that, that I was reading up before the uh, the show is that Netflix is going to stop paying the Apple tax, yeah. and they drive hundreds of millions of dollars of yeah, revenue that's a through huge iOS. One. $853 million yeah. 
an annual iOS revenue. Right. So now they're going to take that away from Apple, and Apple doesn't get a 30% cut of that. If you're Apple mm. and you need to grow your services income, as we touched on in the first yeah. segment, mm -hmm. that's critical. That's your margin but right in there. in that case, you could safely say that's rent-taking on Apple's part because Apple... Hmm. You know, it's one thing if you're delivering the app and you and people pay for the app. Apple's giving you some value. But if you already in Netflix app, you got the app and you're giving or Kindle books, for instance, you're giving Apple a third of the subscription fee. That's rent taking on Apple's yeah. part. I yeah. think that that's really wrong. Apple think, might have to give up on that. And haven't they reduced the amount of money they take for subscriptions? Isn't after there the something like after a certain amount of money yeah, or time, yeah. they take less? Yeah. Which, well, I think, is, I'm, I'm, which I think they had to because once you get to a certain number of sales, you don't need Apple that much anymore. And they are you are just paying them a third, uh, what, 30% for very little. I mean, yeah, you get to be in the App Store. Well, people want to buy this app anyway, as we saw with yeah, Fortnite. Yeah, but, you, you know, as so, a developer, you don't have to have anywhere to download. Apple provides a CDN. They have Akamai. They store it for you. Yeah, but um, if you're a Netflix or a Fortnite or a big games developer, you can do that anyway. You can do that anyway. Yeah, Riot um, Games doesn't need Apple to promote their stuff in the App Store to drive downloads, but mm. that's probably thirty companies out of yes. the thirty thousand that are on exactly. the App Store. That's the rub. Yeah, but they also it's the power law, right? So they drive most of the revenue. So they, I, Apple doesn't really care if Billy Bob's Lemonade Factory App Store dot Tumblr leaves or not. No, no, but they do care if eight hundred fifty three million flees from their pocket from they Netflix. Mm. That's a huge amount of money, yeah. especially if you're banking on services to make mm. up a shortfall that, in yeah. sales. I know they're saying that what are they twenty but, billion? But the solution is not lowering the cut, or would you being, rather have four hundred million of, or, than nothing? Being developer friendly in the long term will lead to more income. It may lead mm. to reduced growth in the short term, but if everyone that's a, the high dollar customer, effectively, of the app store on the app side on the company side leaves, what are you going to have left? Apple needs this desperately. They need to have good relations and long term commitments. Yeah, and they've been stiffing people for so long that's going to take a little while to get, to get back. Remember when they charged more money for a DRM free song? Was that's like the, the, the quintessential Apple really thing. Yeah. It's like a dollar twenty nine for like an iTunes Plus song. Yeah. Like, I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, if you want to play us anywhere else, you have to pay us extra. Like, come on, y'all. Yeah, I know. Epic, yeah. creator of Fortnite, made $3 billion in profit in 2018. <laughs> this is basically on a free-to-play game. That's what cracks me up. Yeah. That's $3 billion mm -hmm. in dance moves and costumes yeah incredible that's it's like also a what game happens that i've never gotten close to winning once yeah, no the, um, <laughs> never gotten close to playing once oh, oh it's fun. fun you would enjoy I know, it everybody says that i know <laughs> <laughs> who has I don't, who has time i don't know I well know, i'm not I in know. mexico city on a floating picnic table <laughs> <with> <laughs> I, that's i'm busy doing that i'll tell you thing. i'll trade you for a week you have my life play Fortnite. And i'll go on the tequila boat or whatever the hell it's called you, you know that you're going to be playing Fortnite from the tequila boat i would it'd be so much fun <laughs> I went to brag on all the 14-year-olds who were killing me. Like, well, yeah, you beat me, but I'm on, you know, I'm in Mexico City, so. There was a wonderful meme on Reddit. There's a wonderful subreddit on Reddit called Watching People Die Inside. And it's yeah. this, <laughs> this, 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 this adult with a 14-year-old explaining Fortnite to him for an hour at Christmas. And he's just like, really? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Just just let me kill me now, you know. <laughs> According to Sensor Tower, Pokemon Go made $795 million. Mm -hmm. In 2018, huge game. Uh, also, uh, not a, a free-to-play game. I mean, it also, yeah. all of that is just you know, uh, balls and eggs and stuff. Balls and eggs. <laughs> that didn't actually help the sentence. Now that I think about it, <laughs> I was, gonna say, I was yeah. trying to smooth that. You're not one really out. selling me on yeah. Pokemon Go. Okay, so balls, so eggs, and stardust. Oh, no, nope. see, uh, it's getting worse. Yeah, it's not helping. Long walks oh, in the park. It does sound <laughs> awfully romantic. But I mean, this, this phenomenon is not new. Riot Games and League of Legends for the last 10 years has been driving enormous free-to-play revenue and kind of showing the way through microtransactions and whatnot. So this well, this is a long time coming. A couple of weeks ago, we had the 25th anniversary of Doom, which broke was basically that was how the this first started. premium game. Yeah, basically they gave you they gave you the first what six levels free, oh, and then Doom. you bought Doom. Yeah, yeah. First proper first person shooter what, got it right. What did you think he said? Dune. Oh, oh Dune. Dune. Which was a RTS spice, game based spice, off the of novels. I just oh, want to right. make sure I knew I played both. I want to know which one we're talking about. <laughs> oh, God, Dune that was, that was the another. game. Okay. It's uh, not very good. Yeah, not well, very Dune good. the film yeah. wasn't very good. I was shocked. I found out my wife had a crush on Sting. Uh, when she was a teenager and had a picture of him in that Dune outfit on a wall. Nearly called the lawyers. That was just <laughs> So <laughs> I'm really sorry about this tangent. Doom, though, had a thing you're talking about. Uh, Doom, yeah. Doom, uh, no, no. Doom. Doom was go. the original shareware game which made it work. 
ID Software That's made, right. it was the very made, first one. I remember yeah, millions out of that by and giving Duke the Nukem, game away. But they had done some stuff like that. They had Duke Nukem and uh, well, they done they done Wolfenstein before yeah. Doom, which there were was, a few other kind which, of free yeah, to play. They basically ripped off an awful lot of stuff from uh, another games company, made Wolfenstein, then made Doom, which really worked, and gave it away. Uh, and then Quake just dominated everything for a while. I have to say that's the first time I've heard the word shareware since 2001. I know, I'm dating yeah. myself, aren't I? Yeah. It's, you know, yeah, it's, no, it's... I mean, do you remember how it used to be? I mean, I oh, would yeah. get a cassette of software yes. with, this is free, but if you want updates, send fi send a fiver to right. this address, and you just put a piece of a it, note it in the thing. It was in the notes, uh, the, te the text yeah. file yeah. of the whatever. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And then and you put you it into a cassette player and fiddle around with the tone control, and you finally got it to load. So wait, wait, wait. So I want one more levels. I, I mail a fiver, which is a British slang for a five-pound note. Yeah. I mail it to them, and then what comes back in the mail? Uh, like updates code? to the game. New Another levels. Another cassette. They mail me more cassettes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I... I'm not quite in this generation, just, so I'm learning. <laughs> just be happy you were born when you were. Uh, yes, yeah. I know. You, you didn't miss a thing. I grew up with dial-up, and I thought that was old school. Uh, have you ever yeah. seen an AOL CD? Oh, I grew up on, yeah, oh, okay. they used, used them as Frisbees. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Coasters. Yeah, yeah. I'm but, convinced future archaeologists will find, like, a, the, they'll yeah. name it the AOL level of all these sort right. of in waste, <laughs> in, you know, in, in landfill sites of just, like, layers upon layers of software which once it gets onto your PC is as persistent as herpes and is difficult to get rid of but yes I remember being members of the punch club card of the month punch oh, card wow. club of the month you get a new punch card every month with a game on no, it no you don't no you don't, no, you don't. <laughs> that's a <laughs> fib <laughs> oh those were the days because uh, there were never enough personal punch card computers in the yeah, right. business <laughs> well I you had to buy a that. punch card reader for $38,000 but then <laughs> and a house to put it in too <laughs> Pepperidge Farm and remember. an IBM <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those hey, were the days that was a meme reference I remember yeah. mm -hmm. look at that we're not over the hill yet boys yeah. Qualcomm Still forces Apple <laughs> to stop selling the iPhone 7 and 8 in Germany yeah. Qualcomm that has was an interesting case. set aside $1.5 billion I guess this is a requirement yeah basically the court said to them if you really want to go ahead with this case we're going to need a bond on the potential damages and apple lawyers were reputedly just like e that's the end of that and then Qualcomm mm -hmm. said there you go here's here's 1. your 1.5 billion, point you know, five now, billion get those dollars in other words apple 10 sales are through the roof in germany <laughs> yeah well, you'd hope at least yeah. <laughs> well yeah cuz the 7 and 8 uh, yeah. is that a big deal in fact i think they've even started to remove them from the stores in the us as well <clears throat> however qualcomm is starting to make a little headway on the other hand apple it's really, it's a crazy battle. It's yeah. just been going on for years. Didn't Apple have a court victory uh, with Qualcomm? This is this is born of the world when I turn to you guys and go, what happened in chips? Because yeah. I am very chip yeah. stupid. Um, I mean, it all comes down to modem and licensing revenues. And, you know, both sides feel that they've been ripped off by the other side. And it's up to, up to the courts to work out. Some of the lawyers will get fat. Someone will get about four or five hundred million payout. And we'll go back to you know, business as usual. But it's interesting to see that Qualcomm's market is... How many people it's you know it's pissing off an Apple getting into yeah. bed with Intel, and and Apple's going to be making its own, yeah. um, radios. So, on the yeah, other they're yeah. going to stop putting those chips. So it's a in problem there. that's going to yeah. go away eventually in terms of the relationship. Yeah, but they're going to fight all the way through the divorce. Right? Yes. So the FT. This is what I was trying to remember. The FTC <clears throat> is now suing Qualcomm. Uh, because it, and this all comes down, it basically underscores Apple's position, which is that Qualcomm has patents, but they're not licensing them as franned, as yeah. fair patents uh, at a fair, fair price. Fair reasonable price, yeah. yeah. So uh, the FTC agrees, uh, and uh, they are going to court. They'll be facing Judge Lucy Coe once again. Oh, my gosh, uh, the infamous, the notorious. Yeah, yes. she seems to get all of those The notorious Co. that sounds like a very bad rap band. For those. The notorious K-O-H, we call her. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yes, we do. Uh, anyway, so that's a, a little, I mean, at least a, a, a moral victory for Apple, if yes. not a, an actual victory. So this yeah. fight just is endless. But ultimately, that's what it comes down to, is that mm. Qualcomm has all these patents, um, and particularly for uh, outdated technologies like mm -hmm. CDMA. All this yeah. will go away, I presume, in, with 5G, although yeah. I think they've been snapping up 5G patents as well. Uh, and, yes. they are, and they are charging a lot of money to Apple and others uh, for the right to make phones that support these mm -hmm. radios and these technologies, whether they use Qualcomm chips or it's not. It's classic technology rent-seeking. Yeah. Um, yeah. Back to that again, yeah, right? Exactly. But companies like Qualcomm, um, component ma manufacturers, have all sort of, that's all moved to China long ago. And so mm -hmm. they're they're sort of like... They're based in San Diego, I think. Yep. And they're just fighting tooth and nail to stay alive in, in, a, in a world that really wants their business to go to either 
companies like Apple or to Asian manufacturers. I was going to say the Chinese manufacturers are now making all their own stuff as well. So they yeah, but to... but they're winning in China. They won in China. <clears throat> they won it just won in Germany. Uh, they're they, 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 in many cases. I mean, they have the patents. They yeah. did invent these yeah. fundamental technologies. Yeah. The dispute now is whether they're asking a reasonable amount of money. I was going to say, I mean, licensing. you can say, well, you, you invented the technology, but 30 years down the line, does that still give you the right to, right. to, to rip off? Apple large? says no. Apple's refusing I, to pay I agree it. with this. It's one of my few anti-capitalist views. I think if you invent something, you should have it for even a quarter century. But at some point yeah. in time, let it go. Yeah. Um, but isn't this uh, Chinese chip push under their China 2025 yes. Uh, overall, um, umbrella? basically, they want to be self-sufficient in technologies that they're not that they're not going to have to rely on. Because this is the problem ZTE had last year. Oh, ZTE you know. in America. Z yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. No, no, you're, you're totally Z fine. I'm just translating for you better, from Welsh. ZTE. Yeah. yeah. That's Welsh. That's Welsh for ZTE. It is pronounced ZTE. <laughs> I was just trying to be rude. He's from Derbyshire, apparently. <laughs> Derbyshire. Yep. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, they, they do want to be self-sufficient, and they will be. Um, and... I mean, I was talking to an old Intel hand and back when Intel started shifting production out there, they were just like, yeah, we know they're going to rip off our technology, but you know, we'll keep the good stuff outside China and just use China for the volume stuff. This all falls back to me into the, the kind of the bifurcation of the tech, the tech world into like closed systems and open systems at the country level. China has their own internet. They want their own chips. They want their own IP. Mm -hmm. They have their own internet giants, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They're kind of building a, a nation state of technology mm -hmm. that we in the West increasingly don't want to interface with or can't due to security concerns. <clears throat> yeah. And I don't think it's healthy long term. I think technology thrives on big open markets. And I don't think this is going to be to the long term credit of the Chinese economy. That's my, yeah. my macro view. Um, I think it's too bad that we're moving backwards, it seems, in terms of openness and uh, and sharing across international borders. I think China's so taken the view that we've got 1.2 billion consumers, America's got 400 million. We're fine. You know, it's, it's America that's, that's in trouble over this one. I, I mean, I have, you know, this is complicated. This is a difficult one. It, I have read several times and I've talked to people who think that China's uh, interests are hard to understand because while they want total and ultimate control within the country, mm -hmm. they are very much global, and globalism is very good for them economically. That's why the Belt and Road, Road Initiative... Yes, very much so. And, and so they would like to be a world economic power yep. and play and trade and have open trade, while they are very uh, backward in terms of uh, their peep, their own people. They're very authoritarian with their own people. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, Increasingly so, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I mean, I, I read a story. I'm sorry. This is just no. an aside to, to support that point. Now there are school children in some school districts in China that have smart uniforms that track yeah. the children and they match the face recognition when they enter the schoolroom to make sure that the child who's supposed to be wearing that particular uniform is, in fact, wearing wow. that uniform. So the tracking mm -hmm. is actually tracking the child they think that they're tracking. And then are oh, they in classroom our time? Are they late? Are they this? So it's like a totalitarian uh, Orwellian system within the like elementary school. And it feeds into probably the social credit system that's kind of spread yeah. around the, the but, nation. But and normally when you think of Orwell, you think of a country building walls, right? And 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 going inward. Yeah. And that's what's so interesting about this because they are not going inward in terms of their economy. Well, exactly. But culturally, they kind of are. I mean, to mm. a certain extent. I mean, they, there's some there's some desire. Um, to have Chinese culture more broadly appreciated internationally, but yeah. most of their activity internationally is about getting resources to fuel this, uh, yeah. this enormous economy with all these enormous numbers of people, which is kind of necessary. Because I mean, back back in the day when Chinese people used to mostly ride bicycles and so on, it was like the, the resource demands were not that great. Now everybody wants the American dream in China. Right. Which is why yeah, the so. African push is going exactly. on. And why well, that's been going on for two decades yes, now. Exactly. But uh, one last thing before we take a break, but Leo, you said they want to go uh, externally, economically, not entirely true. They've been moving away from an export-based economy for some time and trying to build a <laughs> domestic consumption-based economy, oh, interesting. which is why the last two quarters of slipping data on the consumption side of the Chinese economy has been so scary to people uh. because tax revenue is down and it's a huge mess. So I think... I think this is not the China show, so I should shut yeah. up. But I think there's a lot here from the tech side that we need to pay attention to in the next couple of years because this well, topic is not going increasingly away. Increasingly, we are watching with interest to see China's going to leapfrog us in AI. Yep. China's, you know, because they're the government's way ahead of lots us in of AI. money uh, on this. Uh, there, there are way a lot of technologies. Yeah. Uh, in terms of space, they've just landed 
done the first the dark side of the, the moon? on the far side of the moon. Please, not the dark side of the moon. It's Wait a minute, you can't call it the dark side? No, because it's not dark. Oh, okay. it's a Pink Floyd it's album. Dark not to us. Okay. Yeah. It's dark to us. It's a great. It's but, a, you don't see the other side, but there's a sun there, right? But that no, that's why it was called the dark side, like in Darkest Africa, where you didn't actually know what was there. But technically, oh. it's the far side. I've been far I've side. been arguing with readers about also this a great cartoon, all the far week. side. Fantastic, yes, fantastic cartoon. But a great album, the dark side of the moon. So, yeah. <laughs> but. It's interesting, they, they had an AI conference where, uh, just uh, at the end of last year, where they were saying, yeah, well, America's filed more patents in AI than any other station. So, yeah, the fact that the Chinese aren't actually, sorry, has filed more papers, academic papers about AI, the fact that the Chinese haven't done as many doesn't mean they're not producing the they're amount not of publishing. stuff. They're just not publishing. And it doesn't mean they're not memorizing all the papers that the U.S. has published. Exactly. And and just there, there's also, this, this feeds into another story that I don't know if it's on the rundown or not, but it's basically... Uh, the Commerce Department wants to yes. is considering the limitation. It is on the rundown. Uh, the limitation of AI technology exports, not uh, including a number of other things. And this is a dumb. I, I personally think mm. this is a dumb idea because yes. basically, the, the the idea that there that the China will, will just raise its hands and go, well, I guess we have no access to the U.S. AI technology. I mean, the, mm. the students are here. They, they're they're Chinese citizens who work for corporations in the U.S. I mean, if you look at yeah. in the sciences. Uh, a huge number of researchers in almost all fields, mm -hmm. including computer science, are Chinese nationals who have come to this country recently. They have this policy in China called the Thousand Grades of Rice, where if you return, you're academic and you work in AI, you will have a long meeting with some people, nice people from the government, who will start to work on you about what's going on, who's doing what, mm -hmm. and you know they put a, they have a way of putting a lot of pressure on you and your family and all this kind of stuff. So they're going to get this either either by through exports micro, yeah. or they're going to get it through students or they're going to get it through consumers mm. or they're going to get it the old-fashioned way, corporate espionage. So there's no need to limit our exports of this stuff. It's self-defeating. Yeah. All, all it does is it gives uh, U U.S. AI companies a disadvantage in the global marketplace. Yeah. They'll be buying Chinese tech. And how does, does that help us? It does provide a nice headline to a current <clears throat> anti-China administration we have running yeah. the executive branch. Right. But... Again, not a political I mean, show. I would say with, with a caveat to what you were saying, like, yes, okay, there's espionage and yes, there, there's students. There's also a terrific amount of very well-funded, pure research being done in China. If you look at particularly in terms of quantum communications and those sort of areas, they are leaps and bounds ahead because they've invested the money in academics and they've done the pure research that's needed. Yeah. And that's something America is very bad at is funding this long-term pure research rather than going for sort of short-term commercially viable stuff. So the Commerce Department is taking uh, comments. They will make a decision on January 10th. This comes from a bill passed in August by Congress, the Export Controls Act of 2018, which allowed uh, the government to restrict exports of emerging and foundational technologies. Including voice. Mm. And so you would think, I mean, oh, the Chinese are stealing it from us, they're cheating, uh, we should keep them from this stuff. Mm. But in fact, academics are worried because, A, you can't control the export of this stuff. You can't control. And 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 a law like this will actually hurt us more than it would yeah. hurt the Chinese because we won't get the information. Mm -hmm. The Chinese will anyway, and and that means we will become, we will fall behind. In I mean, that research. is expecting rationality from the Commerce Department, which is a bit of a hard push at the moment. But it's hard because, you know, on the face of it, the, the surface of it sounds like, well, yeah, we shouldn't be giving them our keys to the kingdom here. We should we should hold those close to the vest. But that's based on a on a on a false notion. It's widely held in Washington that false notion, which is that if we don't share technology, technology will stop. But te <laughs> technology won't stop. No. All this stuff is ine inevitable. Yeah. It's perfectly inevitable that really advanced AI will go completely global over the next. 10, 20, 30, 40 and, and years. And all that'll happen is we won't have access Either we're to it. involved in it or we're not. And right. so it's like, take your pick. Yeah. It's happening. Open systems beat closed systems. And if Every we take time. part in the open system in the long term, it'll be to the benefit of our country, right. period. Right. And I didn't mention, though, that, uh, well, Fortnite made uh, three, or Epic made $3 billion on Fortnite this mm -hmm. year. Ninja, <laughs> the eSports champion, the number one eSports guy who's the king of Fortnite players, says he made told CNN he made $10 million this year playing Fortnite. I mean, he's got an enormous... He's a celebrity, flat out. So when like, your mom I'm, I'm said, just, what uh, are you going to do, play video games for a I living? I was going to say, I'm so peeved. This is exactly <laughs> what my parents were telling me 20 she years ago. If I was just a little way down the timeline, I could It's better been. than you think. There's a Far Side comic from decades ago that shows parents oh, yes, looking at a television ad, sorry, an ad in the paper where their child plays games and it says, can you save the princess $50,000 a year plus retirement? <laughs> and so they were joking about how video games could become a 
uh, actual living. And then yeah. decades later on, Farsight was prescient as opposed to rude. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> not, not surprised. I think uh, Gary Larson was a very... Is he alive? Still? Oh, yeah. He's, he's he ba Basically, he doesn't allow... He's in total retirement. He doesn't do public appearances, <clears throat> doesn't really even want his face online at all. Good for him. Uh, yeah, because basically he did it until he felt it stopped being funny and then retired to spend there more time is. with his money. There it is. September 2nd, 2005. Yeah. The, the Actually, the comic is from much earlier, I'm sure. Yes, it is. Uh, Nintendo expert needed. $50,000 salary plus Nintendo. bonus. <laughs> Looking for good Mario Brothers player, $100,000. <laughs> Can you save the princess? We need skilled men and women. Seventy-five thousand. <laughs> okay, look I, at I the dopey kid. Who's the gay one? Hopeful parents. <laughs> With the stupid backwards hat. Yeah, yeah. but see, but he's, also, he's mean, not saying this is gonna happen. No, no. <laughs> he's saying parents are wishing this no, would happen because yeah. my kid is so dopey. Right. <laughs> <laughs> this was a joke about how gaming was stupid, and then yeah. it became true it's decades true. later. I just, it's interesting. We, I was looking to a piece last year, last year where um, the U.S. Navy used to have these special controllers for their periscopes, yeah. which cost like fifteen thousand dollars a piece, and they've just replaced them with Xbox controllers. <laughs> One of the most <laughs> modern ships they've got yeah. Xbox exactly because right? and also because the generation of sailors using them grew up with these controllers. They've got and overdeveloped so thumbs. They're really powerful. The yeah. army also has these tanks where there's a like a gun on a turret on top of the tank and it's yeah. controlled all electronically. Yeah. And they just get the latest eighteen year old kid in there <laughs> yeah. and they're like, okay, go ahead, just pretend. Oh, like man, it's a do you know what Call of Duty is? Get up there. Yeah, if I were, yeah, if I were a, a conspiracy theorist, I would just be all over this one. This has the, been the plan for the last 30 years. Leo, don't encourage them. Well, you got, I mean, who, what was the game called? The U.S. Army actually they developed, game. They developed a a the first-person shooter. There's also um, a bad TV series about that where the people from the future come and get this gamer because he's like the best, you know. In the oh, I know uh, no, there's a film, The, yeah, a film, the Last right. Starfighter. The Last yeah. Starfighter. Star yeah, 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 something like that. And the movie yeah. Toys yeah. involves children playing games that are actually powering real tanks they don't know are real. That's yeah. Uh, well, don't, don't tell us the story, but I think it's called Ender's Game. That's a different movie, but is also a similar point. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Our show today brought to you by my shiny, clean, sweet-smelling smile. Because I use Quip. Quip. I love Quip. My daughter, the other day, I was so proud of her. This was about five months ago. said, Dad, I think I need to brush my teeth more. I said, darling, you do. She said, I want to get an electric <laughs> toothbrush. I said, darling, it's done. And I had a Quip subscription for her by the end of the day. <clears throat> Starting a healthy routine and sticking to it are two very different things. I know you'd like to brush better in 2019. Don't use that tired old toothbrush. Get yourself a Quip. Quip is a better electric toothbrush. I just got my Quip refill, by the way, yesterday. It had a new head because you have to replace that head every three months. Automatically, they mm -hmm. send you the new head. It had a, uh, a tube of toothpaste, and it had a battery in it because Quip is the only electric toothbrush that doesn't plug in. It's a great travel toothbrush. It uses a single battery, a AAA battery. You know, 90% of us do not brush right. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Uh, you're sp let me ask you, uh, Mr. On, dental yeah, sorry, Health. Really, you're going to ask the British, British about guy. dental health. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know you should brush for a full two minutes? Uh, I, I just keep the big book of British smiles in the corner, <laughs> and that reminds me to <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, They have a little timer in the quip. It pulses every 30 seconds, so you do four quadrants, two minutes, and then it stops. It's great. The cover, I love the multi-use cover because... It could be a stand, but it also has stick them on the back, so you can mount it to a mirror, so you never forget to brush, because it's right there in your mirror in the bathroom. It slides over your bristles when you want to travel. You put the put it head down, and it protects your quip on the go. Plus, it declutters the sink and makes traveling easier. No wires, no clunky charger. It goes three months on a battery charge. Brush heads automatically come on the dentist-recommended schedule every three months, and that's just $5. Did you know, more statistics, 75% of us use old, worn-out bristles that aren't doing the job because we don't change our brush head. Who remembers, Guilty. right? Yeah, <coughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah no, I, I keep my toothbrush for about a year. I'm sitting here, Leo, you know, I travel, I'm like, shh, you had me at batteries. Cause batteries, right? Literally yeah. half the time I travel, I forget the charger. Yeah, yeah. The charger's and then, and then I'm using deal. the electric toothbrush like no, a manual you gotta toothbrush. Get a question. It's yeah. terrible, by the way. It doesn't vibrate. Yeah. I have a separate quip that is goes in my dop kit for travel, so I always have it ready. Quip is one of the first electric toothbrushes accepted by the American Dental Association. They're backed by over 25,000 dental professionals, thousands of verified five-star reviews. Everybody who uses Quip loves it. Over a million happy, healthy mouths. Go to getquip.com slash twit right now. 
Quip is also affordable. It's the most affordable electric toothbrush out there. It starts at 25 bucks. If you go to getquip.com slash twit, you'll also get your first refill pack free when you purchase any Quip electric toothbrush. G-E-T-Q-U-I-P. Getquip.com slash twit. Get your Quip toothbrush and get your first refill pack free. Brush better. I love my Quip with Quip. And we actually have And your quips. smile is dazzling. You know, it really <laughs> is. We have quips for, because um, we have a 16-year-old, he has sleepovers. And the kids, it's interesting, 16-year-olds never bring toothbrushes huh. when they come to a sleepover. Hmm. Really? Never. Never. So we say, no problem. We've got your quip right here. We'll put their name on it. It's, it's, it's kind of funny. They do not like that, I admit. But too bad. <laughs> too bad. We have to brush our teeth when we go for the laports. We don't like it. <laughs> we don't like it. It's a, it's a tough life. Man, it's a tough Fewer yeah. cavities and less time right. wasting yeah. your parents' money. Than Lisa office. is, uh, 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 I don't want to say a tooth Nazi, but Lisa is a dental, <laughs> she's a dental health You already yeah. said it, Leo. Advocate. Enthusiast. Enthusiast. Yes. She's very serious about it. Well, and, it's important. And as a result, Michael has, n has never had a cavity. Never. Are you serious? Cavity. Yeah. Wow. 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 Yeah. That's okay. You can't knock uh, it. No, it works. God, the yeah. last yeah. time I went to the dentist, the dentist, I was, went to a new dentist and she looked at me and I yeah, you've got British teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that, though, that's no longer, that's a canard. Uh, actually, kids these days are, are they get wearing, good yes. yeah, I mean, they they get decent dent, and, and they are wearing braces, which means that a lot more yeah. British people have got even that teeth That is now, a blight but. in the United States, though. There is no teenager now in the U.S. I never had braces, but no. you it's just like automatic. Yeah. You get braces. I don't know why that is. I never there's had a, there's a huge class distinction, back to that, in uh, teeth in America. Having teeth that, right. are, that are imperfect is considered mm. to be a huge that's social a good signal. Point. That's yeah. that's your parents that will, yeah. will spend the car payment on your face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's basically it. More Which is really weird because yeah. at the same time there seems to be no social stigma about grossly overweight people wearing spandex in public. No, or, we yeah, like that. Yeah, what's we're, wrong we're with in that? Dangerous ground, gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Tread, Careful. Tread lightly. Yeah. Careful. So in the world of technology, I hear that there's yeah. a drone coming out or something. <laughs> uh, Amazon Echo shopping tripled. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. From, from a low number, though, right? Mm. Yeah, well, I mean, Amazon three stack. times nothing is not much. Yeah. Uh, the number of voice-activated orders placed on uh, Amazon's Echo three times greater during the 2018 holiday season than last year. Uh, Echo was also called on hundreds of, this is, you know, soft stats from, from Amazon, hundreds of thousands of times to help folks find cocktail recipes. The number one? Eggnog and Moscow Mules. Oh, good crap. You know, first of all, <laughs> eggnog's bad, but a Moscow Mule's yeah. delicious, but it's Actually, really Moscow easy to make. Moscow Mules are good. Yeah. Yeah. How can you no, not I, know how to make a Moscow Mule? I, I was just going to um, just uh, slam uh, Amazon again, because they always do this. As a journalist, it's so frustrating. <laughs> They're like, oh, it tripled. Yeah. Okay, yeah. from what from, to what? Yeah. From yeah. one to three? Like, yeah. what? They, they, always try, they always imply wild growth mm. without ever telling you what it is. Yeah. And they will never tell. Here's and, a number. A real number. In the U.S. alone, Amazon shipped more than one billion products through Amazon Prime. So, yeah, they're, they're a shipping company then. But yes, I mean, it's... Yeah. Well, we have one other number. Two days yes. ago, Amazon announced they sold over 100 million electric devices yes mm -hmm. now but, that's not just uh their own echoes that's right. devices with echo or yes, amazon yes, voice services yes. built my in future father-in-law has a bunch of these and they're moderately okay yeah. um but to your point though you're totally correct they almost never release a base they'd only give yeah. you the, the in kindle forever the mm -hmm. biggest kindle you're ever up 200 percent right. mm -hmm. was it four from two right yeah uh and it drives me absolutely yeah. batty does anybody buy kindles anymore not the not the tablets the the ebook no, my readers. wife's just I bought one they do really uh, yeah because they're all one died um it's just if you're going away on holiday or if you're commuting, then they are really quite handy. Because I never, I'm never anywhere without a book. I don't have a Kindle; I just put it on my phone. But she. Well, that's why I wonder because. But she wants you've got a tablet life. or a phone. Yeah. You've got Kindle. But with a smartphone, you've got to recharge it every every day. Whereas if you've got a Kindle, which is you know using e ink, then that thing can last for two weeks. Remember, I'm not living in the 21st century, so you'll have to tell me. In Victorian Do England, <laughs> there are no plugs. Do people right. not? Uh, is has is. Are e-books replacing paper books? Or are people no. just not reading books? No. 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 Tablets are replacing e-books to slowly, and I yeah. think paper books are on the rise. So yeah. paper books are also replacing Kindles and yeah. things like that. Yeah. See, so we thought, all of us in the late... 20th century, mm -hmm. that people would stop buying books by now. That yeah. paper would be dead. That yeah. people wouldn't... I mean, it's true we don't see magazines and newspapers, but I think 
ebooks are not as satisfying an experience. They are not. I have three print no. books in my backpack, I think, right now. You know, like to me, I've never spent more money on print books than I do this last 12 months. I, right. And I love, I live on digital devices, but you know what they give me is a break from that. Exactly. And critically, I yeah. can't read on a tablet or a phone because I will get at least some notification that'll mm -hmm. derail me. A print book is a gift to yourself. It it's is. Yeah. Focus. It's the it second is. biggest gift to yourself you can have. The, the number one is a print newspapers. Squatty potty. Right. Oh, print newspapers. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. It's, have you done that? It's like, this is the most amazing thing in the world. I always do Which, read the squatty potty or print newspapers or <laughs> at both. the same time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and they a cigarette. Together. It's peanut butter and jelly. And coffee. Well, yeah. I mean, I I posted a picture of myself um, online of with the bookshelves behind yeah. me. And the amount of people who are just like, you've never read all those books. Yeah. Is that know? a screen? Is that a, is that a, is that Yeah, a I mean, it was just like, and it's not oh, that, that many, yeah. but it's It still, isn't that many. It's yeah. just like- Press that, wanker? You can't yeah. see his, uh, <laughs> mm. if you're watching the How show- How do we show a, that? There's a picture of- Is that on your Ian. Instagram? Uh, it's on Facebook. Oh, so that's yeah, too bad. I don't do it. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't do paywalls or walled away. gardens. Yeah. Um, anyways, it's a picture of Ian wearing a very tight red top. No <laughs> other word tight. will suffice. Uh, in front of a collection Are of. Are you used playing books. Australian Rules football now? No, no. I was I was going to Schmookon, the uh, hacking conference, oh. and I'd made a bet with one of the organisers because they said obviously you press and you've got to make that known to people. Yeah. Uh, so always wear your badge. I said, I'll go one better. So I just wore a T-shirt saying press wanker, and that way everyone knew. You know, it's perfect. also your nickname all in one go. It's perfect. You know? <laughs> well, somebody did ask if it was a service, but no, it was... Uh, Wanking is dun, a dun, service. Dun, 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 dun. Family yes. show. But yeah, the... Um, Amazon said the number one uh, toy in the holidays was... The LOL Surprise, I don't know, is that part of the name or is that the uh, is that editorializing from a fortune? The LOL Surprise Glam Glitter Series Doll with seven surprises. No, I guess that's part of the name. Fortune doesn't huh. have a sense of humor, so it must be the actual name. Never the second most popular toy, the Nerf N-Strike Elite Strong Arm Blaster. That makes sense. Yeah. Good fun. It sounds like one was for girls and one was for boys, but I don't want to say so which. So was the top wasted one that unicorn thing that's been... Have you seen this? It's it's. I saw it on. on um, it might be. I don't think glitter is a good idea. But let's just yeah, take a look. It's a unicorn that you feed with this. What? This um, is a this is a ball. Oh, okay. Now the, the number one in the UK. Inside the ball. Wait a minute. Open the ball. Inside the ball. Seven surprises. Little dollies. Huh. They're all glittery. How much money does this egg cost? Eight dollars. What? And it's shipped to you for free. Well, Prime. Um, no wonder this is the top prize. Yeah. That's a stocking stuffer's I dream. Like it's a Happy Meal without the French fries. <laughs> yeah, but oh, that's a downgrade. Yeah. Well, also, but you don't allow Kinder Surprise eggs here, over you know, with the, uh, with the little toy inside. Yeah, why don't we allow that? Because it's a chokeable. Uh, apparently, it's a, it's a choking problem. You know, it's like. But yeah, have a lot of Brits I mean, they're died about from that, that thick. No, I've never okay. heard of anyone. Okay. In even maybe American guess, children are not as prudent. Down. That's how they get the teeth. <laughs> they have better teeth. Um, um, can we talk about the fact that Amazon's doing the whole Whole Foods push? Because I'm really excited about that. So Amazon bought Whole Foods, yes. and they are now using them not only to deliver packages. Mm. I went into my Whole Foods the other day. There's a massive wall of lockers. Mm. Yeah. So you can what? Go there and get your package? Yeah. Or Why or is this food? necessary? Don't people... Have pirates. door stops? No, no we live in apartments, Leo. Oh. Yeah. Also, you've got porch pirates. So that's been a massive problem this Christmas. They reckon, you know, they reckon sort of over uh, some like ridiculous number, like five million yeah. people have had packages stolen off their front porches. Did you yeah. call them porch pirates? That's yes. what they're called. That's far too lovely. <laughs> I'm a porch pirate. Arr, I'm a porch pirate. <laughs> right. How about okay, like, stealing scumbags. There then. you go. Know, <laughs> the alliteration makes it good. But yeah. Stealing scumbags or, you know. They seems... actually want to build more Whole Foods stores because they want every one of you to be within a, a short driving distance of a Whole Foods. Yeah. To give them I all I live half money. a block from a Whole Foods and can tell you that what happens is you never have stuff in your fridge, and so you go to Whole Foods for stuff, and then you don't have any money. You don't have any yeah. money in your and, pocket. But it works, though. You're fed, but then you're also broke. Yeah, it's like, oh, I need to find milk. I'll go down to Whole Foods. Oh, what's a $50 bill? Right. <laughs> you you do, do I, food I did. They finally got me to download the Amazon Prime app, so that I the Whole Foods app, so I could yeah. get a Prime discount. And I have, I, just, I don't know why, but I feel like now it's just going to watch me everywhere I go. Oh, yeah, it is. 
That's Absolutely. the whole point. Yeah. Because all it is is a barcode. They could send but me a still, picture. But sure, I mean, they've had store cards in this country for, what, 20, yeah, 30 years now? Like surely that, it's the it? same thing. But I don't trust Amazon with my data, so I've actually stopped using the Prime app because I never got discounts, but I gave them my data for free. And I was mm. like, this right. is a poor trade. If you send yeah. me a dollar each trip, I'll give you my shopping cart. Right. But otherwise, I'm not going to tell you. I don't I don't want to yeah. give you that, Bezos. I used no to offense. give Radio Shack my phone number when I bought batteries. Battery club. Yeah. Wait, what? The Battery Club. Again, we, we have to break break it to him what it used to happen. Are you too young to remember the Battery Club? Battery yeah. of the Month Club. When you used to buy stuff at Radio yeah. Shack, they would want your phone number and what else? Your everything. address. Everything. Zip code, yeah. everything. And, and he, he just gave it to him. Oh, yeah. Because back then it wasn't Why not? dangerous. Why wouldn't you? I mean, eventually you're like, you know what? I gave it to you like 20 times and I'm not going to do it You just give up. Yeah. yeah. You give okay. up. Okay. But they, they did that. I did buy stuff at Radio Shack. I'm not like that young, but I just didn't <laughs> do Battery of the Month Club. I think they stopped it at some point. I mean, they must have. Um, that's not, that's ago, not the whole company, ago. too. Yeah, they uh, stopped that as well. So if you buy a TV in the unit in the United Kingdom, you have to give them your name and address. But that's different because so they the charge the license yeah, fee. Yeah, so the yeah. licensing body can actually oh, that's come That's fine, and, and that works fee. out very well. But I have, the, I have the same problem at CVS. If there isn't a discount when I'm buying them stuff, I don't give them right. my phone number because right. I'm not particularly interested in letting them know that I bought shaving cream yesterday or razor blades the day before. You know, it's... It's, it's cost-benefit analysis. Some of the stores they're no building benefit. are actually bigger than the uh, current Whole Foods stores, 45,000 square feet, and that's for Amazon delivery and pickup. Well, Amazon sees the writing on the wall, which is that all stores, for the most part, in are going reasonably. away. No, they're, they're becoming experiences. Yeah. So they're going to transform, over the next 10 years, they're going to transform Whole Foods into like a whole experience. And I don't right. know what that means exactly, but it's, it's going to be a lot more than just like go and buy some food. Was this yeah. the vision when they bought Whole Foods? Um, that plus the thing that they're doing, but, which is using it as a physical location for all kinds of network pur purposes. For, yeah. yeah, which is what we talked about. I think I was on Twit when that <clears> happened, <throat> and we said they bought r prime real estate near everyone's house that's already a prime yeah. customer, and that's yeah. critical to them. Yep. Yeah. And and the other part of it is that Whole Foods was popular, and I don't know, was it profitable? I don't no, know. No, Whole Foods was actually struggling financially. Uh, okay, so really? uh, yeah. Amazon could clearly see why. Is that not true? It's, it's, they weren't growing as fast as they should, but they were among the more profitable. Oh, they uh, were profitable. Yeah, I, the price, they, I thought they were in trouble. They, they were not growing, was okay. I think their problem. Mm, okay. but, back the the but Amazon, as, as ruthless capitalists as they are, were, were able to easily see why, and so now you see Whole Foods is not quite as great if you're a super foodie or a health food person. Mm -hmm. they, they eliminate a lot of yeah, organic stuff. Yeah. They sort of like, they kind of gone in the direction they of don't want to be a well, organic food store. amazon wanna... could realize we can make this so profitable right if we just like make it less idealistic and more yeah. just ruthlessly <laughs> business-like yes and that's what they're doing so that's not to say that the old whole foods didn't have its it's i mean the asparagus water fiasco was yeah. just you heard about I, this i don't want to know i uh, did spend like 15 dollars when i was 23 on like four tomatoes by accident yeah. Whole yeah. Foods yeah. chief executive John Mackey said in a recent video to employees he wants to address workers' concerns, <laughs> improve communication, focus on career development in 2019. He says sales have grown mm -hmm. since Amazon took over. At the beginning of the second year of this merger, Mackey said we're going to pivot back to team member growth and happiness. Uh, the minute you hear the word pivot, you know something bad Happy. is going to happen. Happy. You know? Well, Amazon, and I imagine Whole Foods, too, are getting, is getting a lot of heat for its <clears throat> poor treatment of workers. Yeah, and honestly, yeah. I've, I've never seen a whole, a whole Foods worker who really looked happy in their job. No, they do seem glum. Yeah. The um, you know, it's... I mean, obviously, if you're standing at a till running through... If you're through, taking uh, all my money, you should be happier. Well, you know... They should get a cut. They're they're not ring getting, up. The thing oh. is, they're not getting the money. That's know, true. That, that's, that uh, suggests another benefit that Amazon, I'm sure, loved about Whole Foods. No unions. Yeah. yeah, an ununionized grocery. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah, and they actively fought against unions. Mackey is is mm. very rabidly anti-union. Yeah. Well, that means I don't like him much. I would go yeah. somewhere else, but they're too but, close to my house. But he he put his money where his mouth is and paid his workers and gave benefits that were far superior to any other grocery union. So he basically was like, mm, yeah, here's what Joe, if you Trader buy Joe's off the union solution. with piles of money to yeah. the workers, yeah. I'm cool with that. Buy off the yeah. workers. Yeah, that's what I meant. Sorry. Yeah. 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 So. Uh, According to a study, Amazon uh, Whole Foods employees will not be able to. No, I'm sorry. You would have to pay the average Facebook user a thousand dollars a year to stop using it. I think that's one of those studies where they kind of like <laughs> they did an reason, auction. Got to read. They did an auction. I'd and love to. I would <laughs> like to see the methodology on that one because I was highly suspicious about that. It was just like it's really you know it's like. Just throw a number out there, but if it actually came down to it, I think most people would cheerfully abandon Facebook for 
hundred bucks, you know, hundred bucks, yeah, hundred hundred dollar gift card, like a something. real hundred dollars, like here's some actual hundred dollars. Right. And then of course they'd sign back in under another yeah. name, but you know it's just, yeah, I mean, <sighs> Facebook is 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 useful in some oh, circumstances. To ensure that like, respondents were telling the truth, the whole thing was real. Participants really did have to give up Facebook. Oh. And they and really did they get money. That? Wow. How did they monitor that, though? The how study did they get found, involved in the next one? You'd have to pay an average <laughs> $4.17 a day or $37 a week, and they will, they'll stop using Facebook. That's not much money. $4 a day. $4 a day. I never got $4 for the for dollars of the joy out of that product. Students yeah, needed ever. to be paid more than adults. Grande Student latte a yeah. day. Hmm. I'll take it. I like lattes, though. Yeah. Oh, you see, no, if they paid me in lattes. No, I'll take the lattes. If they pay me in coffee, that's different. I'd, yeah, yeah, I'd do yeah. that. Yeah. But, I mean, so you're off. I'm off. You're going I'm, off. I'm getting off. And you're I'm on. You're on. Um, so one out of four of us grumpy people. And this is mainly because I I need to keep stay in contact with friends in the you're UK. You're a press wanker. And you have to be. <laughs> you have to have a. Well, I hear, no, actually, uh, Facebook for news is useless. It's um, terrible. Yeah. Twitter for news is actually pretty good, but Facebook for news is awful. Well, you say useless, but it's the number one source of news. I mean, it, pe people uh, actually do use it well, for yeah, news, news consumption. Well, yeah, news consumption, but if you're right. looking for breaking news and, uh, oh, yeah, it's or, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's just it, a waste it, of it time. Is worthless. The only reason I use Facebook is because I've got a bunch of friends back in the UK and I like to, I like to know what they're up to. Um, with f American friends, we generally just talk. You know, I know it's old fashioned to pick up a phone and make a phone call these days, yeah. but. You know, uh, either that or an, e or an email. The, 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 that was the biggest reason, uh, the biggest difficult thing about giving up Instagram, which is that I have friends all over Instagram, the world who are on Instagram. Really, I did lose track of yeah. you and, yeah. and yeah. people like you. Yep, yeah. yep, exactly. But, you know, it, what's funny is I, I sort of keep track of you and your life through Lisa's accounts. Yeah, that's mm. cheating, isn't and, it? And, yeah. My wife posts all these pictures of right, me. Right, right. <laughs> it's, it's probably best that you didn't see some of them. I know. Yeah. I've heard. <laughs> I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but but you really do give up. I mean, they really do kind of own us, and they they yeah. it's really painful to get off these networks. The problem is, I haven't replaced it with something that I could read. I should replace it with like is just yeah. mm. letters to you, yeah, or you know, uh, emails or something, telegrams, like, staying in we touch, communicate less, and that's okay. Like I yeah. sat down. I'm yeah. not. I haven't. I didn't know. I had to ask you, Leo. How how have you been? Which What's is up? nice. Yeah, and you said nothing has changed. But like, I still had to take I the moment to think to about it. Face to face is good. Yeah. But it's not practical in this modern world, or is it? We're supposed to have friends we, around the world. Back in the day, you knew Bill down the street. Yeah. You need, you, you need, you do. It's nice I to mean, have I notifications when, I was a kid, when somebody has something to say or something to show. Mm. And this is why I like the the nice book concept, the, the the Google Photos shared folders. You get the notifications. You see the pictures. You see the comments. You get to like them. You get. It's but as you people. said, Mike, it's a false image because everyone, you, no one puts the bad stuff on Facebook unless right. they're one of those right. psychotic people. But generally, it's just like, sort of, isn't life great? Isn't life wonderful? And right. there are it, studies it, showing that this does depress It's a people. public performance. And yeah. this That's is the problem. This, this is what I like about, you know, called, Google Photos security. is more homey. It's more, yeah. there's no performance. Hmm. It's like, you know, we need to go back to Chautauqua. Yeah, let's do that. I, I heard you wait, talking what? about that. Okay, now this. Chautauqua? This is back to the, is the a, village. The village. This was a huge uh, movement in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Okay. Teddy Roosevelt said, Chautauqua is the most American thing in America. It's where we get the word talk. It was, no, no, it isn't. No, it's, <laughs> an, it's an Indian word, but the idea was it was an assembly of people. They brought entertainment and culture for the whole community together with speakers, teachers, musicians, entertainers, preachers, specialists, They'd gather together, often in a tent, mm -hmm. sometimes in buildings, Chautauqua buildings. There's still Chautauqua institutes all over the country. And you know what killed it? Radio in yep. the 20s. And I think we're in a similar situation here. Where tech, that's an example of technology killing off something that hmm. did say, solve a human problem. Like, how do we, how do we formalize Right. Yeah. Socialize. I don't know if you anybody remembers this, but in the 90s, there was like a movement where people used to have what they called salons. Mm-hmm. And mm -hmm. they would be like a bunch of smarty pants. Remember like, the salons? Bay Area, yeah. 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 It would get together and they have these conversations. Like, they live little, on as book groups, I think. Yeah. I so think like, yeah. Which, which always evolve into wine clubs. Book clubs seem yeah. to be yeah, basically drinking sessions with books exactly. involved. Isn't that funny? That's been my experience as well. <laughs> 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 and don't get me wrong. This is no bad thing. Right. But, you know, it's, but yeah, there was the salon movement, which would, yeah. was basically copying the 1890s, 1880s sort of salon yeah. movement. Which really but, but, but I think you're onto something, Leo. Highfalutin. Yeah. The thing about a Chautauqua is a little bit more... for everybody. Yeah. If folksy, yes. yes. I think you should launch a movement to bring back the Chautauqua, and you have this huge platform, this huge megaphone, 
Go for it. I'll, I'll come to your Chautauqua. Chautauqua. You know? Well, I, the reason I mentioned it on the radio show is because I think, in a way, that's what that's what uh, a talk radio show, yeah. especially if it's around a topic. Chautauqua like radio. It's Chautauqua <laughs> radio. It's really, that's what it is. It's kind of getting together and just kind of community and talking yeah. and... Uh, and I kind of like that, but I think we've lost that a little bit. I think the, the uh, I, current social media doesn't have that same sensation of. I, I think what you do with podcasting in the chat room is as this close is much as you more folksy. Yeah. Yeah, 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 because with podcasting, like radio is too commercialized and too yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. desperate to make some money. Where, whereas with podcasting, you choose the topics you want to learn about, yeah. and it is genuinely educational. And Pod, podcasts are almost a modern version of this because right. they are they are niche focused, but they're also community <clears throat> oriented, and they're yep. available to everyone for free. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Right, exactly. and they're also relatively unregulated. I mean, we can get sure. away with saying stuff here, which we couldn't get away with saying on broadcast television. Oh no, we'd all be in a lot of trouble right now. This was John CBC. will yell at yeah. you though if you say John is oh, no. like uh, the, no, no. the agit like, pie. Of exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's a killing. Fighting you. words. He just called you a cop. Have so, you seen his coffee? Your response. <laughs> John, we need to get you a giant Reese's coffee yeah. cup. <laughs> Is Ajit Pai the least popular person on Twitter? I want to talk about no. him in a second. Awesome. We'll, right. we'll come right. back because, I mean, really, this is all going to be about CES. And I noticed that none of you are at CES right Damn now. Damn right. We're it's smart. Starting yeah. up. But we'll talk about that in a second. First, a word from our sponsor, Last Pass. From Time Hop to My Heritage to My Fitness Pal. You know what they have in common? Maybe if I throw in Marriott, Equifax, now you know these data breaches. Last year's data breaches affected millions of people around the world. If you're a business and you are keeping track of data, whether it's your data or customers' data, you need LastPass Enterprise. It makes password sharing convenient for employees, but keeps corporate data secure. And you will have centralized admin oversight. We use LastPass Enterprise here. We have for years. Uh, ever since one of our engineers put his passwords on a public website because he couldn't remember them. <laughs> uh, he realized his mistake. But uh, we then got LastPass Enterprise because, of course, you, you, you want to use LastPass. You want to use passwords you don't remember. You want to use long, randomly generated passwords. In fact, we use LastPass's password generator to create these crazy passwords. Who can remember those? Well, you don't have to. You just remember them in LastPass. In fact, I trust LastPass so much. It's encrypted only on device. So even the LastPass company cannot access your password vault. No one can but you. We, use, we, we require with our admin settings that you use two-factor. We have master password requirements, too. Um, that's all important. You actually get over 100 policies. You get security reports. You get shared folders. Shared folders are nice because, like, our ops team has its shared folder. The business office has its shared folder. So all the, all the company assets they need access to are there. In many cases, they don't even get to see the password or know the password. It just logs them into, like, say, QuickBooks, our, our accounting program, automatically. So if we change the password, they don't have to know about it. And if they leave the company, they have no way to get into it, which is fantastic. Uh, Two-factor authentication. We support multi-factor. We require it. LastPass integrates with a variety of authentication providers to offer uh, flexible multi-factor uh, options. They also have a, an authenticator app that's awesome. Instead of a number, it sends you a push notification. Approve or deny. You press the approve button, you're in. And even if somebody got your passwords without... The two-factor authentication, they wouldn't be able to get your stuff. I just I, I just love it. If you use Active Directory in your company, Microsoft's Active Directory, you can log into LastPass with your AD credentials for a single sign-on experience. Because the data is encrypted and decrypted at the device level, because it's so secure, and we had Steve Gibson actually get together with the creator of LastPass, Joe Segrist, look at the source code and vet it for us. And he said, thumbs up, he uses it now. Because it's so secure, I keep my passport in there. I keep my driver's license, social security numbers, everything in LastPass. Just protect your business. They have an enterprise solution, but they also have LastPass teams for teams a little smaller, 50 or fewer. LastPass premium for your home users. And at home, we use LastPass families for the whole family. That way, everybody, including the 16-year-old, gets LastPass. Uh, actually, the ex-husband also gets LastPass. We're very friendly that way. And I think it's, <laughs> it's awesome because... Things like, uh, you know, when, when Lisa needs access to the, uh, you know, the Comcast account, she, it's shared with her automatically. So she gets access to it. I don't have to think about it. She has what she needs. I have what I need. I love it. You're going to love it. 43,000 businesses, leading tech brands like MailChimp and Fortune 500 companies and Twit <clears throat> use LastPass. It's the number one most preferred password manager. LastPass.com slash Twit. 
Find the best password solution for your team at lastpass.com slash twit. If you're coming to RSA, by the way, come to the Last Pass cocktail party at Bourbon and Branch. Uh, we went last year. with was so much fun. We're going to go again this year, and I'm bringing Jason and Megan as well. So you can come say hi. Oh, uh, I'm totally doing that. A, a couple of quick things about passwords. I just got published a, 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 a I hope, well-researched piece about passwords and the myths around passwords. Is this uh, where It's on security intelligence. Okay. Um, time to dispel these dangerous password security myths by Mike Elgin. Uh <laughs> Anyway, one one of the one of the most uh, interesting myths I think is that people think a long, complicated password is always really secure, but they're not. When if you write your own, it, chances are it may not be all that secure, according to some research that's been done. That's actually really interesting. If you let LastPass create the password, it's going to be secure. Yes, mm -hmm. because it's, it's a, a completely random combination right, of upper right. and lowercase numbers and punctuation. Right. Your I, choice, and I also make them really long, <clears throat> like. 40, 50, as right. long as the site will It doesn't will matter if you're using it. doesn't matter. It's the right. so yeah. same. An another myth is that uh, password managers, LastPass, uh, the leading one, um, have solved the problem. But the only reason they haven't solved the problems of passwords is because not enough people use them. People don't use them. Yeah. And, yeah. and so that problem is still there because people are not using them. If you 86, use them. This is from your own article. 86% of Americans rely on memorization. It's, yeah. it's <laughs> terrible. It, this is this. This is as crazy as giving your credit card to the waiter in but a restaurant. But you know what that tells me? <laughs> if they rely on memorization, they're using uh, a easy to crack passwords. Yeah. Easy passwords. It's the name of your dog. With, yeah. yeah, exactly. But also, there's, I was, there, there was some research on this at DEF CON where they were saying about you know, where you've got to put the uppercase, lowercase on the symbol. In about 40% of the cases, the symbol is always an exclamation point at the end. Yes. Because that's easy right. to remember. And it's easy to guess. And, this is, and password crackers are smart to this. Right. And that's the one of the assumptions they'll make when they're trying to brute force them. And yeah. there's a new kind of AI that's out there called GANs, which which mm. can easily crack any sort of new... Oh, really? What is this? Yeah. I, unless they're really good. Um, so GANs is... Uh, let me see if I can explain this um, clearly. GANs is a type of technology... It stands for Generative Adversarial Networks. Networks. That's right. Yeah. You have two machine learning algorithms that, that go against each other. Mm. One is um, trying to create fake data, and the other one's testing that data, and they uh. both make each other better and better and better and better and better to the point where the one that can create fake data creates such great fake data that they can actually, they can actually crack fingerprints. Yeah. Really? It'll actually generate fake fin fingerprints that are very likely to pass as real fingerprints, and then it just runs 100,000 fake fingerprints against it and cracks the fingerprint because one of them is going to get through. Because the fingerprint, anyway, it's a, it's, but the, the, um, remember the, 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 this, this, uh, uh, this acronym GANS. This is a GANS this, painting. Yeah. This, this, this painting is created by GANS. GANS is also the technology behind the, the deep fake videos. Yes. Oh, really? Yes. This is the, oh. this is the AI technology that's really changing things. Uh, and it's coming along a lot faster than <coughs> and generative very, very because worrying. it's two artificial intelligence, two neural networks. Exactly. Working kind of adversarially, exactly. yeah. and and together they both get better and better and better and better to the point where the one that's creating fake data makes such great fake data that it's Yikes. better than the real thing. The other thing I want to say about about LastPass because uh, I'm a, a dedicated user is I want to speak to my tribe, the lazy, <laughs> because <laughs> because you just set it up with a fingerprint and everything you have that has a password you just touch the back of your phone and you're that's awesome. Or yeah. the front of your phone if you're an iOS. Exactly. Yeah, Face ID works with it too. Yeah, so that's, it's that's like the best thing I've heard all day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> great, great. This is a good article. Uh, I'm gonna have to it's steal that security line intelligence. <laughs> Mike Elgin, it's time to dispel these dangerous password security myths. I'm going to quote you on the radio show because fantastic. That's who uh, you know. I mean, I think everybody who watches our show probably already uses LastPass and certainly knows if they don't, they should <laughs> that they should be using it. Or uh, you know, there's a there are other good you know, use a password manager, yep. let's say that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have yeah. to be an individual brand. I see you making a face. You use one password. No, so. I just want to point out that the Eagles did get the touchdown. Oh, you so were, we're looking up, at the football we're up game. 16 15. So people don't know, but uh, this twit. That was his last pass right there. This twit <laughs> was scheduled in advance, and then my football team made it to the playoffs. And so I have had one quarter of one corner of my eye on this game all. You and, warned me that that would happen. At some point, we'd be talking about something, yeah. and you'd make a face. Yeah. But it wouldn't be about the topic. Nope. It would we, be about, we have so, had the armored rugby play game playing yeah, for quite armored some time. The reason why I didn't accidentally interrupt it. Mike for two and a half minutes was because we were at this incredibly difficult scoring drive, and we just... So 16, the Eagles 15. are leading... Well, we mm -hmm. don't want to say. Don't say, because... There are people at home who are tape, watching this show. Oh, true. Oh, good point. It's, 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 it's an exciting game. Enjoy yourself. That's all. It I'm is. Saying. We but don't know who's won because it's not over yet. True. True. But it's a 
back and forth seesaw battle of the titans. Yeah. Not incorrect. Totally true. Anyways, I will stop spoiling the game, but I will say my heart rate has gone down dramatically, and so I'm feeling at ease. We don't know what the score was. He was wrong. <laughs> true. <laughs> Glad about your heart rate. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. What is your Apple Watch? Oh, you don't wear one. Oh, I don't wear an Apple Watch. I'm not a. You remember last year at that amazing uh, Super Bowl with the Phillies won? Mm -hmm. That people were getting Apple Watches saying, "I think you're dying. Yeah. <laughs> you're, there's something going horribly oh, wrong. You've been sitting here, yes. but your heart rate just spiked." It's I, a metaphor I, I for love fooling football. Yes. I love fooling technology like that. We did a, a group. I managed to convince my editors to let me do a group test on personal breathalyzers that link into your phone through an app. So convinced the company to buy us some scotch, wine, and beer, and then we sat around in the office drinking Testing. and blowing into these things. Yeah. <laughs> and if you take a big shot of, of scotch and blow direct immediately into the breathalyzer, I got it to say, you are in urgent need of medical care and must go to a hospital <laughs> immediately. And it was Your just... blood is now actually entirely scotch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Microsoft is doing something. Speaking of, of, uh, of passwords and privacy, uh, I think this is a really interesting thing. Mary Jo Foley broke the story a couple of days ago. Codenamed Bally, it's a way to give users control of the data collected about them. We were talking on Windows Weekly this week that, you know, Apple, if you go to CES, there is a big billboard mm. that says what stay, what happens on your iPhone stays on your iPhone. Apple's doubling down on yeah, privacy. Yeah, it's also not true, however. You know, <laughs> true or not, it's a good marketing Oh, it's a great marketing thing, but it's complete bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Other than a complete lie, it's yes. Zach Whitaker, who's now at TechCrunch of all yeah. places, uh, one of my favorite security he's journalists, he he's great. did a thread really about how player. that's a, a, a bollocks advertisement. And I wasn't mm. aware of all the different ways in which it was actually oh, yeah. kind of crappy. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, well, one Whitaker's of the problems fantastic. is iCloud, which, of course, Apple has the yeah. keys to. And when you but upload iCloud, and if you're in China... Apple and China have the keys to yes, uh, because all the iCloud servers are in China with access uh, available to the Chinese government. But what else is wrong with that? Uh, I would have to go back and read. Right. Shall I go read the threat for us? Well, it's yeah. It was, go get uh, it, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about Bali. We were saying on Windows Weekly that the uh, that Microsoft would do as would do well mm. since they are. I mean, really, the competition, Amazon and Google, are can never say your privacy is our yeah. number one priority. Apple can say that. Microsoft could say right. that. They should say that. Hmm. I don't I, know. Having spent a, a good long day trying to lock down a new Windows 10 system so it wasn't constantly Well, they're not sharing. doing it right yet. Yeah. yeah. They need to give you, you know, one of the problems, and a lot of people complain about it in Windows 10, is that even if you turn off all uh, mm -hmm. of the telemetry, there's some still remains. Microsoft really needs a button that says, no, I don't, yeah. I don't want you to send anything back to Microsoft. And they need to, you know, publicize that. And that's yeah. an opportunity for them that Google and, and Amazon cannot duplicate. This feeds into my longstanding theory. I don't know if I've ever shared this with you, uh, Leo, but I think a lot of people at Microsoft listen to Windows Weekly. That's true. I think it's very influential. No, no, it's absolutely company. true. Yeah. In fact, we have uh, every year, uh, our Christmas episode has the chief marketing right. officer, yeah, Chris, yeah. Chris Capicella, on. Yeah. But I do think, and it's not because of Twitter or me, it's because Mary Jo Foley and Paul Therott are very, very influential yeah. in the Microsoft yeah. business. And they're delightful. And they're they great. Are. And they know what show. they're talking about. Yeah. So yeah. the Bally Project, which Mary Jo Foley found a link to, uh, <laughs> Microsoft, <laughs> nice That's job, so Mary is described as a new personal data bank which puts users in control of all the data collected about them. This is something a lot of people, including, uh, was it Tim Berners-Lee, who's created a company to do this? Yeah. A lot of people looked at this idea of, you know, with all the privacy issues we're talking about, really, it's a question of selling your data for something of value. And mm -hmm. the, f the only way that'll work is if you know what data is being collected, you control it, and then you hmm. actually decide who to give that data to and what the value is going to be to you. If you can do that, I think then... There can be a reasonable conversation. You know, if if I know how much data Google's getting out of my Gmail account and I know how much value I'm getting from using Gmail, then yeah. I can make a logical decision about whether it's worth it. Or I, I can make a trade-off. No ads, no data transfer, and I'll pay you X well, dollars Well, it would be month. really nice to have that as well. That I would agree. be, hopefully that's, that's the yeah. future, if we get that. Uh, it will allow users to visualize, manage, control, and share, and monetize the data. Yeah, I mean, there is a definite market for an operating system which doesn't constantly report back on you. Yeah. Could it be that this is the year of Linux on the desktop? You I stole my <laughs> joke! Oh! Oh, Sam, sorry. I, didn't uh, I was like, you. oh, oh, I have one. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, I mean, I, uh, there's one of the things I hated about Windows 10. It was that it's so data grabby. You know, they, they will stick adverts pretty much anywhere. Yeah, they've got to stop doing it's, that. It's, 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 
it, it's not a bad operating system in itself, but it's the the nagginess and the snoopingness about it. It's an it. opportunity. There, there's a there's a uh, it's not a startup anymore. They've been around for a while called Digi.me. You heard of them? Yes. Uh, D I G I dot yes. M E. I briefly signed up and then I forgot yeah, all about exactly. it. Exactly. They they just didn't have the whatever it takes to go mainstream. But this was their idea as well. You collect all the stuff, and they wanted their vision was to get to the point where the user would be in control of all their data and could yeah. sell or give permission and all that stuff. And they just had the, the right is, idea. How do you do that without the cooperation of yeah. Facebook, Google, yeah. companies that make so much money, all of their money basically, on selling your information? Right. What's their incentive to participate unless governments or society or us mm. start users start saying no, we're not going to do it. So and also for Facebook with their with their shadow profiles, you the user don't have access you to the information know. Yeah. they know you about know. you. You've got a dossier, and it includes information you never shared with them. Yeah. Mm. So so uh, on Friday uh, we're going to do a triangulation uh, with a woman named Shoshana Zuboff. She's a uh, professor emerita at uh, Harvard Business School and has written a new book called The Age of Surveillance Capitalism. Ooh. Yeah. The fight for a human future at the front at the new frontier of power. So she's really done a lot of work on this idea and uh, we are in a state we are in a world of surveillance capitalism. Yep. That's that's how these companies make money is mm -hmm. by surveilling us. I don't know if there's an answer but I'll we'll talk to uh, Professor Zuboff about that. Uh, are you really optimistic? Interesting one to listen to. About no. this, Leo. About about this. I gave whole up a long thing time getting better. <laughs> but I feel like there's movements now. We're all off Facebook. There's Bali coming. We're all talking about this. We didn't talk about this five years ago. We just said, yeah. "Well, Facebook's not going to stop because, ha ha, they're Facebook." Yeah. Like, m maybe there is change. Maybe in there's the a wind. movement. Yeah. I think I think people are gradually getting up to the point that, oh right, okay, well, it's nice having the free service, <clears> but. <throat> what's the cost to me and what's the cost benefit analysis right and people are actually thinking about it unfortunately the reason they're thinking about it is because these companies have been so egregious in the way that they've they've used this data in the past but yeah it's hopeful possibly i'm but optimistic for the first time ever i feel uh i think i think us leaving the platforms is the the real catalyst for it's the beginning of a change yeah because they have to keep I mean, I'm a, I think I'm a relatively high value user at Facebook in terms well, of like what I can spend. I guess the, the key is to is to weaken and water down their um, their network effect. Mm. Ah, and th this is the thing. So you have to be on Facebook because everybody's on Facebook. But what if everybody wasn't on Facebook? Then suddenly the appeal is kind of weakened significantly. So that's the that's the idea. It's not to everybody to leave Facebook. It's for mm. if 20 percent of the Facebook users left, that would really weaken the value of the. Of the service i can see how that works out yeah but i, I will say we'll find something <clears throat> else as a species on which to communicate in mass form let i don't me, think uh, we're going to end up with just email but let me quote quote uh, sci-fi author bruce sterling I, I don't know if you're uh, familiar with his yearly state of the world which he usually does at south by southwest this year he did it on the well yeah uh and I'm sorry, did you say the well yes, yes it's, it's still, still around going. you're kidding no it's still going why didn't anybody tell me i signed <laughs> up i signed up i thought finally a social network oh for my, my people yeah uh, it's not cheap you said you wanted to go back to the 19th century it is very 19th century <laughs> uh he, here's a quote from his state of the world 2019 the world is gray it's becalmed it's not a fatal gloom but it is a kind of learned helplessness a malaise and bewilderment it's very much the attitude of people who sign on to Facebook because they can't yet figure out any other way to live. They do that because they must conform to the apparent need, despite their vague ox-like awareness, they're being spied on, tricked, and defrauded. This is the resigned malaise that fits the post-Snowden internet and tech industry's consolidation. It's the funereal aftermath of Moore's Law. He's a great writer. It resembles a fat, sweaty guy on the couch snacking on poisoned cookies that's how it is <laughs> he is a really good writer when he's on full. <laughs> I, I think that's the same guy trump said hacked the uh, yeah the yeah. same yeah the, the, the emails uh he feels like and he travels quite a bit and talks to people quite a bit there is that this kind of gray malaise yeah spreading throughout the world i hope we're not getting to a pessimistic <gasps> Sports ball people, if you yeah. if you're not watching and you're just listening, <laughs> it bounced um, off. A ball went flying through the air, off. and then everybody it got it bounced really off of something. Huh. And there is a uh, a general look of gloom among one of the sports. I mean, cut cut teams. this part out of the edit, but like, <laughs> <laughs> don't say anything. <laughs> I, we're talking about malaise. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> it's malaise. So, anyway, <laughs> this is a tax for me not canceling. Oh, it bounced off. 
Okay. All right. That's like straight out of that Sorry. Pepsi ad where they iced the kicker. I know. Hold on. So, anyways, tech. <sighs> Honestly, everyone being so excited about kicking a pig's bladder around a pitch. We, we have four and shows happening here. Leo's, Leo's talking policeman. about substantive <laughs> issues. You're talking about sports I'm ball. I'm I'm like the well. <laughs> I, like I can't believe the well. Still said, in said on I signed up for a, a, a year at 150 smackers. It's not really? cheap. Wow. wow. But I thought, and then I went in and I remembered, oh, this is why I left the well. I was on the well a lot in the 90s. Mm. Um, it's it's not any better. It's just like Times New Roman. No, no, it looks it's like worse. Notepad. It's courier. Mm. It looks like Notepad. Mm. You can't really t tell what people are talking about. You see responses yeah. without seeing the main message for the the threading's bizarre. Maybe I haven't figured it out quite yet. But it was the first time I ever saw the internet was on the well. You could drop out of the well interface into a command line, yeah. and I could use Gopher and Archie. You can't do that anymore? No, I don't think so. It's no. web-based now. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, forget it. I'm not joining. <laughs> anyway, I, uh, I, I think this is worth reading. You do have to go visit the well. Uh, if you search for Bruce Sterling and SOTW, State of the World, you can read it. He invited some other people. But he is a great writer. I, I hope he still does... The South by thing because it's yeah. worth going to that talk just to it, hear. He's him about speak. the only yeah. thing worth you know, yeah. Going yeah, to South yeah, by South, yeah. South by Southwest. Yeah, yeah. it's well, like you're a gonna come, You're going to come because I think we're trying to figure out if we could do the Capital One House again. So you should come and you mm, can be okay. part of our panel. How about that? There you go. We'll do Twit from uh, South by. Sure, that mm. would be fun. Leo, awesome. can I come? Can I come? Yes. Mm. Right. I have said yes. I, haven't, yeah. I haven't been to Austin yet, and I do hear that. I oh, hear Austin's the food, great. I hear the food is amazing. Oh, you don't get to diss Austin if you've not been. No, no, I don't. I was dissing Austin. I was dissing, dissing the Bay. kind of, you know, sort oh, of no. social media obsessed weirdos that turn up to South Go by. Go for Bruce <laughs> Sterling. Stay for the queso. Yeah. Okay. Do you like meat? Oh, you love oh, Austin. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I mean it's, he eats blood sausage. Yeah. yeah. Per our prior conversation. But let's <laughs> good point. Let's take a little break. We had a great week uh, this week on Twit, and we do we have a. I believe we've created a small movie so that you can see what you missed. Watch. Previously on Twit. Hello! Happy New Year! <laughs> Did you know? It's yeah. a new year. Yes, it's oh, a new God. year. Brand new for 2019 with all new hosts. I'm Leo Laporte. <laughs> That's Jeff, how we find out, Stacey. <laughs> Jeff Jarvis. Right now. <laughs> Actually, it's the old hosts. Dude, I disappointed everybody. No, everybody's happy. Yeah, they're like... Oh, new hosts. How exciting. And then, oh, it's no, just them. It's just them, them again. again. This Week in Google. Uh, wielding rocks and knives, Arizonans attack self-driving cars. <laughs> this is yeah. a, These are the Waymo vehicles going around in Arizona. They're saying and we're that, the beta subjects for this. I guess that's a real point of view, right? That's reasonable. Lawmakers did decide this. So technology companies really need to like wake up and realize that they can't just fall back on data. They have to start dealing with people in all of our horrifyingly messy glory. Windows Weekly. You two, as is your want, have made lists for the new year. Mm -hmm. Predictions for Microsoft. When we were at, at, at Ignite, and this guy says, uh, I don't know even know how this came up, but he says, you know, you said <laughs> that Google start. would never buy YouTube. I don't remember this, but man, they, they'll hold you <laughs> beat to the fire. As it happens, <laughs> I'm holding in my hands your predictions from last year. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> so, well, look at the time. <laughs> Twit. Wishing you a happy new year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and happy new year to you, too. Jim Cutler, who uh, has for years been our uh, booth announcer. Jim did all the announcing for Tech TV, and he uh, very kindly, because he's an expensive fellow, I couldn't really afford him, continues to do our, uh, our announcing for uh, Twit. And we love Jim. Happy new year, Jim. And Dawn, his wife. Our show today brought to you by Zip Recruiter. This is a great year to take your business to the next level. The people you hire in your company are your company. That's what a company is. It's made of people. And the right hire can send your company to the moon. The wrong hire can make it crash just as surely. So kick off 2019 by planning out which roles your business needs to hire for, and then doing it smart. Start the new year off strong by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash twit. Unlike the other job sites, ZipRecruiter actually finds qualified candidates for you. They have very powerful matching technology, goes through the resumes they have on hand. It will identify the people who have the right skills, education, and experience for the job you're posting. And then it goes out and says, hey, there's a great job here. You should apply. It actually invites them to apply to your job. What it means, and we had this experience. We lost our bookkeeper about six months ago. 
And Lisa's kind of going, oh, now i got to do the books, too. I said, no, no, Lisa, look, this was at breakfast. ZipRecruiter, we've been advertising with us for years. So she went to ZipRecruiter, she posted the job. Within an hour, the candidates start coming in, thanks to this matching algorithm. And she's looking at you, oh, oh, this one's good. Oh, this one's even better. By lunchtime, we had I think a hand like five or six. It was an amazing experience. It is a. It, I am a true believer now. It really brought in ex the facets I've ever seen. The right candidates, and of course, we hired the right person fast. ZipRecruiter is rated number one by employers in the U.S., and you better believe Twit will always use it. Uh, in fact, number one on Trustpilot, over a thousand reviews. That's pretty good. Find out what you need, who you need. To take your business to the next level in 2019 and hire them fast at ZipRecruiter. Right now, you can try it free. Again, you got to go to ZipRecruiter.com slash twit for that free offer. ZipRecruiter.com slash twit. Show your support and help bid the best business you can with the best people from ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter.com slash twit. It's the smartest way to hire. It was an amazing. By the way, cheered her up immensely. <laughs> she was not she, doing the books. Not, doing, not the doing the books made her very, very, very happy. Uh, strangely enough, Congress has been busy with other stuff or <laughs> not doing other stuff. Mm. Didn't pass a copyright extension law. So as of a couple of days ago, uh, a number of works from not everything from 1923 became public domain. Oh my gosh! Like what? What falls inside great that umbrella? I'm sorry, 1922. Yeah, the great guy. So yeah, the Steamboat Willie. Would yeah. Be included in well, that. Steamboat Willie's 1924. So ah. this is what will be interesting to watch. There is no Sonny Bono anymore to get the copyright <laughs> extension law. That's what happened last time. There will only be one Sonny. Bono. It's the first time in yeah. 21 Sonny years. Bono Memorial Ski Run. In 21 <laughs> years, the first time that anything's gone into the public domain. In t in two yeah. more than two decades. Yeah. That's what the, how significant yeah, you this see, is. I'm with Alex, Alex on this because uh, if if you create something, fine, but give it 25 years and then it goes public domain. The, some of the arguments they're putting forward for 80 years public domain, or, yeah. or not me, even maintaining the copyright after the author's dead. That's F, ridiculous. F. Scott Fitzgerald is no longer benefiting from the Great. Oh, Gatsby. but his estate yeah. is right. But it's the like, Great Gatsby, January 2021, uh -huh. two years off. Rhapsody in Blue next January. Excellent. The Sun Also Rises in 2022, but the big one is going to be January 1st, 2024. That's when not only Steamboat Willie, but also Superman and Batman uh -huh. and Snow White. Whoa, that's going to lead to an awful lot of good films. <laughs> 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 well, this is the interesting thing. I mean, in the past, of course, Disney based the, in, their entire work on other people's work even right. by yeah. the way i should point out steamboat willie yes, was true. stolen true but uh grim's fairy tales public domain they were yep. able to make cinderella and snow white but then they pulled the ladder up behind them made it copyright exactly and every time this has come up they've got congress to extend it the last one was sonny bono's copyright term extension act in 1999 mm. that added 20 years keeping everything locked up until january 1st so it is 1923 works are now Coming into public domain. I'm probably the in the minority. In decades. But I, I'd love to see a blockbuster movie um, of The Great Gatsby starring Superman, Batman, <laughs> and Snow White. I did not know where that was going. That, that was would fantastic. be a great opening party scene. You know? I, I would watch that. By the way, I have to correct myself. Sonny Bono was already dead when the copyright extension mm. term was passed. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, he died in 1998. So Congress, to honor him... I see. What an honor, too. Ah, Named the copyright wife, Peter. So it's such a different time in those days. <laughs> it was a different time back in the 20th century. Uh, so this is, a, this is interesting. Apparently, you can take some credit for this. Yep. The internet takes some credit for this. Mm. The Motion Picture Association of America, the Recording Industry Association of America, the Authors Guild, all of whom have been ones to lobby for the extension yep. in the past, gave up. It's not something we're pursuing, said the RIAA, because there's now a well-organized grassroots lobby against copyright extension. Mm -hmm. There are large business interests, Google, now <laughs> on the anti-expansion side, also a wide popular movement they can tie it into. The internet, internet activism. Yep. yep. Uh, the net uh, roots. Net roots. Mm -hmm. I think that's a good thing. This is why yeah. sites like Tech Dirt. They this really keep it, tabs. Yeah. Thank on you, Mike Masnick. Yeah, yeah we really appreciate exactly. the work. Super he does there. important acts of journalism yeah. that do lead to change in I how agree. we think about things. Because the RIAA is not notorious for its cuddliness, mm -hmm. its politeness, and its willingness to give away profits. 
Yeah. But we're going to get some of our stuff back into our own culture that we made and should be tied to commercial It was demand. interesting. The movie, the, uh, the motion picture ass of America already did it, you know, back down on this and they were just like... <laughs> You know, this we're, is we're not going to win. It's costing us too much. Also, it's costing them an awful lot in terms of right. uh, legal fees and false positives. When the RIA did that big anti-piracy, you know, campaign, started suing people for downloading, they lost a ton of money on that. The only people that got rich on that were lawyers, and um, they also created a massive amount of um, of bad, of ill will. I mean, Metallica's reputation took a massive hit. When no they, kidding. Yeah, Lars Ulrich said uh, it was the biggest mistake I ever made. Yeah, mm. pursuing he was, Napster. He was talked into it. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. that includes his last, you know, the last album. But no. <laughs> <laughs> how, much, how much more time do we have on the show to debate that point? <laughs> All right, let's talk CES, and then we're going to wrap it up. You, none of you, were at CES. It was uh, a condition of my job when I joined the register <laughs> that I did not do CES. That's what I'm wondering: Are you being punished or rewarded? Oh. Uh, the, it, it kind of unofficially began last night uh, with CE, the CEA, the Consumer Electronics yeah. Association, yeah. own uh, event. Right. They do a preview, and then tonight it'll be Pepcom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow night it'll be Showstoppers. There will be well, tomorrow. tomorrow. Tomorrow night is also the press day, which is when they do all the press conferences, and traditionally the Wi-Fi network falls over at 10 a.m. <laughs> and, and, and that list is the best part if you're in the press, because that's where yeah. there's free alcohol and free shrimp and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, and, but also the uh, Sony, LG, a lot of companies are doing press conferences tomorrow. Yeah. Then Tuesday the show floor opens, Yeah. Uh, and then uh, everybody goes home exhausted. Yes. Having walked 400 miles. <laughs> and the ladies' negotiable infection take their affection take their prices back down to the pre-CES Yeah, levels. I just was looking at prices. It was funny. I was looking at hotel, hotel prices. prices. Not, not, not. Yes, Tonight, okay. I could get a room in Las Vegas for $119, but if I try to do it Tuesday night, it's over $1,000 at the hotel I was yeah. joining. Same room. <laughs> this is the Cosmopolitan. Surge, surge price. Surge yeah. price. Yeah, yeah, you've got to love those, those, those algorithmic prices. I've talked to a couple of cabbies who say we hate CES. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, he says, on the other hand, they're a lot more fun than the NAB show attendees. So that's there's their good thing there. That's the broadcaster's show. Apparently, oh, the, yeah. Yeah. the CES folks are more. Well, they have more corporate cards, I think. Tech is more doing to well. Spend. At the yeah. Yeah. DEF CON and Black Hat really freaks out the Hunt, drivers. They expect 180,000 attendees, but many more will be there. Well over 200,000 people, come, actually maybe even 250,000 people coming into town for this. Mm. Um, so you don't want to go. No. Why not? It's too big. Um, there are they, There is too much rubbish there, like the internet connected <coughs> toilets and the rest of it. By the way, that's and one of the big, in fact, probably will be the one that gets all the coverage, the new yeah. Kohler toilet, Alexa-enabled toilet. Yes. It's the breakout the, product yeah, so the, far. The possibly <laughs> most ridiculous product of the year so far. But it's, I mean, it, it's basically too big. From a journalist perspective, the press day is an absolute nightmare because you've got to queue for two hours to get into a press conference, and then when you get mm -hmm. to the door, you're told the thing is full. Um, but the conference floor itself, it's a sales conference. It's not about, you know, it's about introducing new products and trying to get buyers to sell them. If you want to get mobbed on the CES show floor, you wear a buyer's badge. You don't wear a press badge. Yeah. Uh, they don't want the press there, and they make that fairly, fairly and clear. And, and most, of the top, most of the products announced are not available yet, may yes. not be available ever. A lot of them are just prototypes. And because you've got 200,000 people there, everyone comes back with a case of conference cough. <sighs> and, and, and the biggest reason not to go if you're press <clears throat> is the reason I don't, care that I'm blacklisted from Apple events either. There's literally nothing you that you're going to... Yeah. No. There's literally nothing Respect, you're going to find easy. out there. Thanks. Uh, that, that isn't available just with a quick, easy search. Exactly. I mean, th I think there are people listening and watching who are saying, oh, you guys, it's just sour grapes. You don't get to go. You just don't want to go. Are you kidding? I, I would pay not to go to <laughs> see. Yes. I, I love sour grapes. Yeah. <laughs> the, the reason he's, he's why... He's looking uh, at the wine in front of him. The reason why I'm glad I don't go anymore is that I always went there, but I never really covered consumer electronics. And right. so I was always kind of faking it. I would get assigned to these keynotes, like, go cover the Qualcomm keynote. Mm. So I would get crammed into the back of some godforsaken conference room in some terrible hotel, sit on the floor with bad Wi-Fi, and write about chips. Yeah. Which I don't understand, and the, that was part of my right. day. It was just so awful we're all experience. basically PTSD. Yes, right. that's the reason. Well, exactly. I mean, but also, I mean, it's yes. it's a, it's for a different audience, and that you know, should we I, be been, paying attention though to the news that's coming out of CES this week? Because there honestly, will be a lot of it. There will be a lot of it. I would do your own, you know, find out what you're interested in, but expect the fact that ninety that half the half the products that are reported on will never exist. The other a quarter of the rest of them are going to be so poor as to be unusable. And stuff like the Internet Connected Toilet is just so full of, well, I can't and, say and, it, and there will be know, thousands of articles about it. Oh, yeah. And, and there's nothing that going there will give you that you can't 
get from those thousands of articles. Exactly. And so it's just well, there's like, no hands on or butt on testing in this case. But well, yeah, yeah, but they're not they're not going to let journalists drop trow and give it a shot. Are what they? if you didn't you know, ask? Though? What if you just went for it? <laughs> <laughs> what would happen then? You tell me. You're blacklisted. It's from not those always days. easier to ask for forgiveness <laughs> in these cases. Can we get but, a backup unit in here? Yeah, exactly. I mean, so what is that site you're showing, Carson? Because I want to see this. Uh, the uh, oh, IEEE spectrum. spectrum. Wow. Well, that would that's you know the International Association of I mean, Engineering. Last, last year it was the internet connected hairbrush and you so, know it was so smart yogurt. What the bizarre toothbrush, the smart yogurt maker and wrist wearables on my must see list. Writes Tecla Perry. Um, really. <laughs> Uh, I think there will be a lot of IoT things. I'm sure. Oh, bounce! He'll be Go B3 wristband. Um, it promises to track calorie intake, hydration, and stress along with sleep and activity. Uh, calorie intake. See, I would get a wristband that was telling me how much I'd eaten. How does it do that though? It doesn't it? Doesn't it's not going to work? I was going to say it's, I, not, it's not, right not like you can say right. Okay, you put that amount of dressing on that amount of salad. Therefore, that that's it, that. It amount can of tell be, by the tilt of your wrist how much dressing. Yeah, uh, it's, it's just, not going to work. Yeah, yeah. That's the problem. Is is these companies promise everything? Yeah, and exactly. Nothing. They promise the moon and deliver. Very Ember's little. wave bracelet is a bracelet that heats and cools because they claim if your wrist is hot or cold, the rest of you follows. I've obviously never met my wife. She has hands like ice at night. <laughs> uh, I don't want a shame bracelet. I don't want to strap things on to tell me that I'm a fat jerk. A shame bracelet. Like, like yeah, you, you, you need that chicken tender? I don't think so. Perry like, also yeah. writes, the Kyrgyzation of everything, or yeah, KOE, right. mm -hmm. once again meets the Internet of Things, IOT, to spawn a kitchen gadget. Yomi's Yogurt Maker oh, is the KOE IOT winner this year. Make it you make it home yogurt. I don't know if this is going to take off. It can produce the currently popular Greek style yogurt, and the pods dispose of themselves by dis dissolving in the milk. Oh, just what I want. Yeah. Oh, really? Pod the packaging, yogurt. packaging in my yogurt into the milk, hmm. eliminating so, waste and avoiding a common complaint against the coffee pod gadgets. The worst uh, Kyrgyzization that I've seen is a tortilla maker, which has yeah. the 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 masa comes in a little canister and has different flavors oh, like this, please. jalapeno or whatever. So it's like. It's like they're trying to find that niche market of people who want the convenience of store-bought tortillas, mm. uh, or, or, or rather the the junk food aspect. Of You're not talking about the roadie matic. No, it's called the. I don't know what it's called. This, it came out of like this, a year ago. When is this coming? I was we, I was told we would be getting one. Yogurt when is maker? our roadie matic coming? This makes uh, roadie makes roadie, which are the flat oh, yeah, pancake yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. breads. But I mean, it could be also roti puri pizza. It's not going to be roti. The, the whole point yeah. of pita you, tortillas. You have a giant clay pot and you light fires around it and you slap it to the side. That's what yeah. makes it roti. Well, they've already made thirty-seven million seven hundred thirty-two thousand three hundred seventy-one rotis. It's I'm the sure most they popular. A, but were they edible? That's it, the question. Just one guy <laughs> making all. That. Well, we're getting one. Uh, we're getting one. I don't know if that'll be part of the CES Lumens breath analyzer for a mere two hundred fifty dollars. When you do the roti matic, can I come on that week? Yeah. Because I yeah. will eat that. Mr. Carbohydrate, you do not eat carbs. I eat lots of carbs. I just, no, actually, that's a lie. No, you're, I, you, I could tell you're keto, baby. You skipped the top product no, of I'm drinking CES. Cokes. What's the top product of CES? The toothbrush. The toothbrush, the toothbrush that cleans your teeth in 10 seconds? Yeah. You know, <gasps> but, but here's another example. I, I covered this like eight months ago on my newsletter when it was like on Kickstarter. Yeah. And, you know, it's like old news. This is the promise of CES. Wait a minute. The We're whole reason go, this can do it in 10 seconds is because the brush goes all the way around your yeah. teeth. Oh, it brushes goodness. every tooth at it the same time. It brushes them all at once. That's so stupid. Yeah. It's so a hang on. It's, it's, a, it's yeah. basically a it's mouth a, guard with bristles. It's a car you wash like for your off. face. It's, it sounds like an assault. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Anyways, let's see the video, Carsten. Let's see the video for the Y brush. Why not? How does it brush the inside of your teeth? It, it's a good name because I'm like, why? Why? <laughs> why? Oh, by the way, a very important optical toothpaste distribution uh, or OTD. Three modes of sonic vibration. Mm -hmm. I know certain mm -hmm. people would be happy with that. And this is how everybody in the 21st century is going to look. Oh, it has bristles on both sides. That's why. All oh, done. Good grief. Deep cleaning action. All done. How lazy do you have to be? <laughs> what if you have a crown? <laughs> What's the base method? It's antibacterial. It's waterproof. You know, anything with soap on it is antibacterial, by the way. 
Yes. Right? <laughs> you know. Well, what? it's like anything can be part of a calorie-controlled diet, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I thought I wasn't going to Twitch. I, sorry, CES. I didn't have to deal with all of this stuff. And now we're bringing CES I'm making to you, Twitch. I'm making you... <laughs> suffer through? Suffer through. All right. All right, and well, you know the thing that. is, people are watching that now. People are watching the podcast or listening to the podcast, thinking, "Yeah, it sounds like actually I could go I'd like to see go that, for that. Too. The, the, I should day. point out the one reason that crap like this gets so much press is because it is featured at these two pre-show <laughs> events, yes. Yes. Pepcom and uh, show, Showstoppers, yeah, and a little bit less at the CEA event. Yeah. And press is lazy. And they want to file early. So they go to these pre-show events. Mm -hmm. Whatever is nearest the door, that's going to get well, all the attention. In defense, in defense of the press, though, I mean, you go to CES and, and basically... You have not a chance of getting Well, there's 100,000 things to yeah. cover. And it's like, which tiny fraction of a percentage are you going to cover? You have to decide. Mm. The, the, the companies that actually pay money to be in these events are not going to be the no-name... $10,000 in many cases. Yeah, so yeah. if they're putting up money like that, there's something behind it. They're much better than average as a CES product if they're in if those you go, if you If you see they a product really at, at certainly... Plus the, the food the, is much better. Well, well yeah, I mean, if you if you see a product beer. at the Pepcom or, or, the, or the, uh, the other parties, you know that they are pro almost certainly going to make it to final production. Uh, and as you say, so yes, the, the food only and drink reason is this very comes good. to mind is because a couple of years ago we sent a couple of reporters down to CES, and they came back. The top story was the Happy Spoon or the Happy, yeah. the the haptic the vibrating spoon, the vibrating or spoon, because oh. it was the first thing in the door at Pepcom. There yeah. it is. Whatever happened to that? The Happy it's Fork, a weight loss fork. What is it? Yeah. Automatically just, just go like that when it thinks you've had enough. The food? <laughs> I don't think it took the world by storm. I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm but that's like saying. emblematic of everything CES. Right? Yeah. It's a well, smart forum. Everything smart we've talked about. The whole world's dumber. Everything right. we've talked about. Uh, yeah. There you go. It's the it's a really a junk show. But there will be a lot, I think, of IoT stuff. There'll a lot of be home automation stuff, as there always is. Cars are huge at CES and a yeah. lot of automation and, mm -hmm. and head ends and all sorts of things. Um, it's also worth it. TVs. Worth, TVs will be big. I mean, one of the things I did find, uh, well, coming back onto TVs, I was there, I don't know if, if anyone else was there when the whole 3D TV push was. Yeah. I mean, CES was all about That's 3D over. TVs. Yeah. That's and over. It, it you know what it is this year? 8K. Ugh, 8K. Christ. That's the big technology. Yeah, too many K. 8K. Yeah, I mean, 5K but it's always and 8K? 5G and 8K. Yeah. 5G yeah. and 8K. It's a match made in heaven. Yeah. Uh, we will have next week Father Robert Ballaser, who is at CES. Oh. He can't. He's he one, can't, he has only. a deal with God. He's allowed to come to CES once a year and then come be on our show to talk about it. Also, Sherilyn Lowe, who's great, and also will be, I think, have just back from CES. And Stacy Higginbotham, who will also she covers IoT. She's on our Twig show. All three of them will be here next week to talk about. See, yes, <laughs> which we've just set up yeah. for them. What a setup, you guys! This yeah. is going to be a show to just remember. Make sure you've got your vitamins up to spec, and you know everyone's <laughs> using hand cleanser because you always come back sick. I'll be wearing from a mask. Yeah, it's true. It's... Hey, this has been a lot of fun. You guys mm. are some of my best friends, and it's great to see you. Alex Wilhelm lives in my childhood home. He's living the dream. He's editor in chief at Crush Base <laughs> News. And we uh, need to give me a new factoid at some point. Sounds Wait a minute. slightly creepy. That's <laughs> the greatest <laughs> factoid ever. He's not squatting there. He's living there legitimately. True. I pay mm. taxes. So yeah. There yeah. You, go. you pay taxes. <laughs> and in Rhode Island, that's not an insignificant amount of money. Property taxes are steep. Uh, we thank you so much for being here Good and back. continue to do great work at Crunch Base News. Thank you for uh, all of that too. Uh, Mike Elgin, he is our gastro nomad, gastronomad.net, elgin.com. Writes, as you can see, for a lot of publications, but he does it on the road. He's always traveling back to Mexico City. Back to Mexico City. Please join us. Uh, it's already filling Ooh. up in March. And uh, all I can promise is the time of your life. Eating, drinking all day, learning. Go to gastro exploring the best stuff ever. Gastronomad.net and click on experiences. And March 26th through the 31st. And it's a small group. And that margarita is nice. actual size on your screen. <laughs> so, oh, come on, really I'm actual that. size? It's huge. <laughs> come on, Mike. I'm doing dry January margarita. at the moment. This is I've torture. never been happier <laughs> for the surface. But, uh, but really, it's huge. The, with these experiences, if you're a foodie, this is uh, unlike. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, he actually, no. he what actually, happened? your tongue did a gesture. <laughs> that was a tongue gesture. Don't okay. lick your screen. Uh, it's hard not to when it's a margarita the size of your head. Oh, I'm doing dry kind. January at the moment. This is painful. No, mm. Just talk to me. I'll work you through it. Yeah, yeah. But we we learned to make tacos from one of the greatest chefs in Mexico. Oh, we fun. we learned oh, nice. all about chilies. We like uh, everything. We do, it's like amazing. I can't wait. Gastronomad.net. Uh, I want to do Morocco. You're doing Morocco yep. next. Prosecco again. Provence. Cava Barcelona. Uh, Incredible. We love those wine countries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wonder why. Wine countries are the best countries. And Ian Thompson, who is the king of the English breakfast. <laughs> if it comes to blood sauce, My mother will be so proud. Back bacon, <laughs> soggy yep. toast, scrambled eggs. A, co oh, a cool... No, never scrambled, always fried. Fried, pardon That's... me. He's the man to go to. Uh, you'll <laughs> find his, his work at theregister.co.uk. He's news editor there, and it's always a pleasure to have you. Oh, it was great fun being here, Leo. Yeah. Uh, we do Twit every Sunday afternoon. We're back in action now, the 2019 episode. I didn't even mention it, but this is episode 700. Wow. I don't know if that makes it yeah. any, you know... You're in the. You're all in the 700 club. That's right. Uh, does that mean something else over here? <laughs> yes, it does. Uh, we do the show every Sunday afternoon, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. That's 2300 UTC. We'd love it if you watch live. You're always welcome to. You get that way. You get all the stuff we edit out later at twit.tv slash live. We have audio and video live streams. If you do that, irc.twit.tv. You could join in with the kids in the back of the room as they talk about the show. Let's see. What else? Uh, if you don't get here on time Sunday afternoon, we have on-demand versions. You can always have everything we do. Really, that's what a podcast is, is on-demand. Audio and video available at our website, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast application. We don't have an official Twit app. There are a few uh, unofficial and very good Twit apps on, on all platforms, Android, iOS, even Apple TV. There's a very good one. Actually, there's three or four very good ones. And Chrome, on and and Chrome, Chrome. extension. Yep. Uh, but you can always uh, just use whatever podcast application and subscribe. That way you'll get it the minute it's available Sunday evening. Thanks for being here. It's good to see y'all. Good fun. Good to see you. Another twit is in this the can. This is amazing. We made it. Doing the twit. Doing the twit. All right.